Uh, thanks for all for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, uh, this is a special all trans everything uh, panel, um, and uh, really excited to have it. Um, this is uh, thought up of by Samantha here. Hey, Samantha, raise your hands so everyone knows. Yeah, uh, it's Samantha. Samantha, yeah, and I'll start by introducing Samantha. But um, yeah, Samantha, I came up with, uh, with uh, this panel. I decided to uh, put it all together, invite all the guests, you know, come up with the topic. So um, I want to thank Samantha for, for being so kind. Um, so, uh, Samantha, um, tell the world about yourself and tell why you want to put this all together. Well, I'm Samantha Banana85 here on Twitch, Samantha Banana4 on Twitter. Um, I like to go on panels and talk about things. One of my most passionate things, for obvious reasons, is trans issues, Dr. Case um, in the middle. as well as native issues. Um, however, last week we're putting together some topics for the Amazon Lily All, all Femme panel on Tuesdays here at Prime Case. Um, however, there was one topic that people wanted to discuss, and that was the, the Blair White um, interview and Blair White in general and, you know, trans people, that type of rhetoric in our community. Um, I felt it would be really good rather than having a bunch of cis people talk about that. I want to get a variety of trans and non-binary people uh, to come together and either bitch about who's right or wrong or see what we can do to kind of further the the type of positive representation within the trans community and the LGBTQ uh, community. Um because some of us feel that uh, Blair White's a good representation of trans people. Some of us obviously don't. Um, so, like, let's see where we fall and maybe come to a conclusion of how we can better put forward Blair, but Blair um, trans representation like in the future. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, and, yes, I'm in color tonight. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> I knew there was something different about Bajo, but maybe she thought she did something for hair. I don't know. Um, <laughs> It's the I red think, lighting. Uh, <laughs> One of us is sus. Uh, thank you uh, so much. Really, it's uh, really good. Nice we'll figure okay. it out. Okay. Uh, next, uh, let's start with um, Alice. Alice, thank you for being here. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, three panels in uh, one week. Amazing. Um, in a row, in fact. Um, uh, Alice, tell me what about yourself. Yeah, three panels in a row. Um, I'm Alice. I stream on here, Alice, after all. Um, and I also uh, have to simp for Calypian Club, which is a server that uh, we talk about seemingly every night, so I feel like I won't go on it too much. Um, uh, Doobie's partner server. server I thanks think. for having me here, and uh, this is going to be an interesting one. We'll see how it goes. Okay, thanks so much. Next. Um, uh, we will go to Johnny Scala. Johnny, how are you uh, today? Hi, I, I like you in the yellow. Looks, looks really nice on you. Hey, thank you so much, you guys. Uh, uh, I'm twitch.tv slash Johnny Scarlet. I go by Johnny. I don't have a gender. Um, I, like, don't hate Blair White. I don't think she always has terrible ideas, but some things she says are pretty terrible. And also that panel that she was on was absolutely crazy and hard to watch. So I'm excited to get in here and talk about it with a bunch of people who are actually going to have a valid opinion on it. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, next, uh, Dr. K. Dr. K, thank you for uh, stopping by. Um, how hey, are you doing today? Likewise. Uh, what's that? I said, how, oh, I... how are you doing today? Uh, I'm I'm doing I've been I've been real busy today running around all that stuff so my hair's like a little bit of a mess compared to usual. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. K. I'm literally the most bitter woman on the internet. Um, I'm a local activist in my uh, area, so uh, I don't actually stream that much. But I have a Sunday stream that I do where I, I play some D and D with some people, um, and I'm passionate about you know narratives, incentive structures, political science, all that cool stuff. Um, you can catch me at Amazing Doctor K uh, on Twitch. Uh, as for my gender, it's trans woman, but it's also kind of a third gender thing. It requires a whole conversation, so I just say I'm a trans woman because it's easier just to say that. Okay, thanks so much. Next, uh, Demon Mama. Demon Mama. It's been a while since uh, you've been on. How have you been doing uh, lately? Oh, I've been doing really, really good. Channel's been having a lot of growth. Uh, we've been doing some really fun and hard-hitting content um some of it serious some of it not so serious um but it's been fun nonetheless uh my name is demon mama you can find me very easily at demonmama.com all of my links are there i have an awesome discord where we do all kinds of creative stuff and for my channel i talk about politics news media um and i also do a lot of debates so i'm very happy to be back here on your show prime so thank you so very much for having me and uh look forward to getting a chat with everybody here Oh, and uh, I am a non-binary trans woman, she, her. Okay. All right. 
Uh, next, uh, River Boat Jack. River Boat Jack. Um, also very excited to see you. you know I'm always excited <laughs> to see you, buddy. Yeah. Um, River Boat Jack, uh, thanks for coming back. Always, yeah. Um, I am, you know, a trans woman, and uh, I'm a sex worker, and uh, yeah, I have a sweet Twitch channel where we talk about politics news all kinds of stuff sometimes i take little forays into dunking on people like john doyle um and uh Fuck yeah john doyle. come by if you want to learn some stuff about socialism and just hang out we have a good time every weeknight 8 p.m central okay all right um last but certainly not least uh we have red charlotte red charlotte who i don't know anything about <laughs> um so this is our very first time meeting um how are you doing uh hi i'm all right uh so i'm charlotte um yeah, i'm a, a trans woman mm -hmm. uh and i'm a dsa member a socialist uh mostly a twitter user and you know i've been suspended from twitter for my foreign policy hot takes and uh most of my political adv advocacy is centered around getting stuff like these uh criminalized um and yeah that's basically it yeah. big right. gun well, thanks so much for being so kind as to uh, join us today big gun really appreciate it um okay so uh samantha why don't you yeah, uh, that's fair. help by introducing uh this topic um, there are that, some they uh, just don't discuss. tend to hang out in these spaces palace okay so um hopefully everybody here got a chance to watch the um debate type conversation um, or basically just like shitting all over trans and LGBT by conservatives, by conservatives and other conservatives that consider themselves LGBT, or by some weirdo who calls herself a liberal, as well as LGBT and a conservative who's a Trump supporter. Um, there was a video on that on, um, God, I believe it was slightly offensive. And it, w it was really bad. There was two really shitty people here. I'm not going to call them Nazis, but I'm pretty sure... They're Nazis, um, but within within like the first yep two minutes. Just to give an example, if you haven't watched it, within the first two minutes, um, Lauren decided to state that transgenderism is a kind of like a stepping stone into pedophilia. If that kind of sets the tone for what what this debate was, um, but I'm going to start with the first question that I have. Um, which is, um, do trans women have a place in the Republican Party? Uh, yeah, well, I'm sorry. Um, Allison, what do you think? Uh, so the fact that that whole uh, debate starts off with somebody claiming that trans people are pedophiles uh, makes me a little, you know, uh, concerned about whether trans people can uh, really uh, effectively be in, uh, you know, conservative Republican uh, politics. Not that those always go together. Watch this. I'm going to drop but, the hottest uh, shit. Yeah. Uh, I would say that that's a pretty big uh, issue there. Um, I think that the Republican Party has made their base essentially around, you know, denying trans people our rights and existence. So uh, I'm not really sure that you can be trans and a Republican. Can you be trans and somewhat socially conservative? Probably. But I'm not really sure that you can align yourself very well with the Republican Party as it exists right now. I'm not saying you can't be a right wing uh, trans person. You can be, but I don't think you can be an, uh, you know, a Republican in the in the uh, concept of you know the American political uh, you know system. And that's really that's it for me on that one. <laughs> okay, all right, uh, Johnny. Okay, I actually have something written down for this. Uh, I'll be very brief though. Um, social conservatism in the U.S. sense believes that their efforts will be rewarded regardless of if they win elections. Being set out of power only drives the narrative of them being oppressed. Uh, and from what I can gather about the Republican Party as a whole, it's certainly not possible to be a Christian conservative and espouse uh, these family values that are basically not optional and also be a trans or a gender or whatever person um because and and this person lauren i believe is the one who said having children is the future of the republican party well i think that being anywhere near a to these christian conservative people i think that being anywhere near a woman whether it be me who is born female or anybody who decides to you know present as a woman I think that they sexualize that inherently and that 
being a woman in general it to these social conservatives and it is inherently sexual and that they focus way too much on the most basal base uh aspects of being a human and it it kind of revolts it's kind of revolting honestly that's those are my initial thoughts okay thanks so much uh dr k yeah okay i mean what is a conservative party its entire basic sales pitch is that it conserves archaic social norms right if you're not trying to conserve something you're not really a conservative party right so what is it trying to conserve in the u.s well it's trying to conserve you know these very traditionalist modes of uh of interaction that you know were kind of created by evangelicals got, and you know uh, the wider somebody social just flashed culture something like in my the window. 19 and 1800s um and it's pretty inherently anti-lgbt and anti you know and thus anti-trans right the only trans people that you're going to find in the Republican Party are either self-hating and deluded or have some archaic social norm that they want preserved so much that they actually, you know, want the preservation of that over their uh, acceptance by wider society. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, next, uh, Dean and Mom. Yeah, um, I am really glad that we're talking about this panel today. Um on this panel because I think that this debate is a bellwether for the future direction of uh, republicanism in America and conservatism in America. Um, we all know anybody who's not a, like deep into the conservative ideology knows that the history of the Republican Party is very racist, very sexist, very misogynist, very transphobic, very homophobic, but they often keep things uh, with a little bit of a mask on, uh, depending on the period. But this is a, a genuinely new level of mask off cruelty towards members of their own party um, who happen to belong to minority groups. Um, and, you know, pardon me for being a little bit crass in saying this, but I think that my takeaway is that uh, trans people have the same amount of space in the Republican Party as they did in the death camps of Germany. Um, the it, by by participating in a party that uh, to its absolute core does not believe you have a right to exist, you are assisting paving the road to that future. Um, and I do believe that's where we're headed. I do believe that's where the party seems to be headed. There is a schism that is uh, separating the party, and there seems to be a battle for uh, which direction they're going to go. And predominantly, it seems like it's going um, in to further right, further towards what we what we categorize as Nazism or fascism. Um, we see this with now Milo Yiannopoulos has announced that he's now advocating um, for conversion therapy in Florida, um, all of these uh, these left the left um, you know minority representatives of the Republican Party and of conservatism, including Blair White, are being subjected to increasing um, pressures, and they are being asked to do more increasingly self harming things. And I think that's the direction that they're going. So I hope that people pay close attention to this because I think the direction of the Republican Party is terrifying right now. Okay, um, next for Bo Jack. Yeah, I mean, I look, is there a place for trans people in the Republican Party? Uh, frankly, no. Like, the only reason I can see why anyone would be a Republican and Thank you, Reza trans Sutra. is because Thank you very like much. others have mentioned they're self-hating or because they have economic interests or because they want to preserve, like, a social structure that, you know, they, they value more than their own position in society or safety in society. And frankly, like, it... it to Demon Mama's point, like, yeah, the two sides of this debate. It's Riverboat Jack. Like, Sorry, it's hard we to actually see. had a congressional candidate on that debate with Blair White. Um, and guess what? It was the one that was coming out and saying the most transphobic stuff about trans people being pedophiles, trans people like being, you know, toxic and degenerate to society. I would love and some coffee right now. Guess what? That whether you, Ziggy. Republicans or conservatives like it or not that is your party right now and if you want to change it you have to go out and do something about it um otherwise that is the momentum of the party and that's where it's going and um people like blair white are going to continue to be like the you know i oh but you know i'll be the last one into uh those death camps you know I, i'm one of the good ones guys and frankly i i find that deeply embarrassing okay uh red charlotte uh I mean, I mostly agree uh, that I think uh, 
trans people ought not have a place in the Republican Party because I just think that conservatism or conservatism is like <laughs> sort of antithetical to the concept of transness to like the advocacy for trans rights. Um, but like in terms of like, do they? Um, I would say currently they probably like do because like in terms of policy, no, right? They the don't. Republican Party does not advocate for trans rights. They frequently oppose it. But if you look at like, polling right even amongst republicans most of them are for legal protections for trans people they're for like not hate criming trans people or whatever um and this is mostly to do with the fact that the republican party does not represent their voters like in any way um they they represent like a tiny sect of their voters and this is like empirically verified with stuff like grossman uh which is a response to gillens and page um and stuff like that uh as we are right now, uh, something like Demon Mama said, like the direction of the Republican Party in terms of its leadership is sort of like heading in a very dangerous road, uh, especially with stuff like QAnon, where like 54% of the party believes that, you know, uh, that conspiracy theory has some merit. And then 23% of people who do believe in uh, that conspiracy do believe in the adrenochrome thing. Um, so like... <laughs> uh, I don't know how um, we're supposed to fix that, like, cultural problem. They, 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 they like to talk about cultural degeneration, right? But, like, <laughs> like I, I don't know. Believing in QAnon seems much more degenerative to society than, you know, trans people being able to play volleyball. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting that you bring up that the Republican Party doesn't really represent the interests of its voters. Uh, I do think that's true to a certain degree, um, but I don't think that it matters really whether they do or don't. Um, the way that it's set uh, right now, they don't have any other choice. And if you watch even Donald Trump's CPAC speech, he knows that. He knows that everyone is on for the ride unless there's a there's a check and they know they don't have the numbers to defeat the Democrats without having all of the Republicans on board. So that means anybody who's not uh, anybody who finds themselves in a position of not wanting to vote for the Democrats is going to be pulled along as far right as the farthest, most powerful elements go. And as it turns out, the most powerful element in the Republican Party by far is is Donald Trump still mm. to this day. And Donald Trump is setting the ideological standard forward. Donald Trump brought up trans people in his CPAC speech. And Donald Trump had a over 60% um, of, of the people who went to CPAC said that they were going to be voting for him in 2024. No one even mm. came close. And it's not even clear if he's going to make it to 2024. This guy's pretty goddamn old. Like, we have a absolute political crisis on our hands. And, yeah, I think that a lot of people who perhaps have been Republican voters in the past, maybe fancy themselves centrists, are going to have to take a really long think about where along this line that's being Dri that's being drawn on the ground they're going to stand because one side mm. is going they're going off the rails it's going all the way to the right and i don't expect that yeah. to stop at all you know i wish that there was a place in the republican party for people who are what i would call now centrists people who are fiscally conservative i myself am a proponent of capitalism that is uh like decently curtailed by a socially minded government but there's no way to be socially liberal or socially progressive in the current climate with all of these people and by the way this the fact that most people in the republican party or who are registered republican are not represented by their leadership is an example of how land votes and how we need to get the fuck out of gerrymandering this country yeah uh dr k the member bochak Oh. Okay, got it. all right. Oh. Remember about Jack. Bye right. then. Um, so, like, I, I, I'm, I'm just gonna come out and say this, okay? I think that Republicans in political positions of authority, they are representing their voters at the very least. Maybe not on all issues, but I think when it comes to trans issues, yeah, a lot of Republicans fucking hate trans people. Okay. They have bought the line hook line. They've bought the the lie hook line and sinker that like trans people are pretending to be trans so they can go and like be predators against children in bathrooms. You know they they have this idea yep. and even if they won't explicitly call trans people pedophiles to their faces, um, 
I think that a really good bellwether for how a lot of Republicans think about uh, trans people is in John Doyle's responses in that in the or, or even the moderator's responses in that uh, Blair White um, debate. They they just smirked. They they smirked. They're like, Haha, yeah, globo homo. <laughs> you know, they're they're talking about all these things. And to them, our civil rights are a joke um mm. and not worth like defending in any in any regard so i i think that maybe maybe there are a minority of republicans who like value the civil rights of trans people but they are not going to change their political position or who they vote for because of that we're we're just not that important to the, most republicans mm. uh so uh, dr k then uh sam Smith. oh yeah we're we're not their constituents they know they're not winning us over and so they don't mean to try uh, one, so my uh, my thing actually got moved up, so I actually will need to leave in 30 minutes instead of an hour and 30. I'm super sorry to do this to you, Prime. Um, but, That's uh, okay. I'm a pretty solid replacement. No, you aren't. <laughs> Nothing beats the K. But anyways, um, like the... Like the, the modern Republican Party, like, has a, a, a vested interest, as it were, you know, in in maintaining uh, this this sort of uh, uh, the this sort of charade, because if they can focus on this culture war bullshit, right? They they don't have to ever talk about you know the economic you know shit show that they're doing behind the scenes, where you know like Trump's tax cut, like that takes out so much revenue and redistributes wealth so high upwards, right? But like that doesn't get talked about because we, instead we can focus on culture war bullshit, right? And if you want, if you want a fiscally conservative party and a with a combination of socially liberal policies, there is a very strong wing of that in the Democrat Party, and I would say that that wing is on an upswing, honestly. So like, don't don't worry. There's a there's a place for that in the Democrats, honestly. Um, like socially progressive and economically progressive. Um, that that's really like there's not really a place for that in politics right now, right? Um, so I would say, you know, if if you are a if you are a trans person in the Republican Party, and especially if you are like yeah. Blair, uh, helping them push this culture war bull bullshit, you are not only making things worse for trans people, but you are making it worse for all Americans because we now have to discuss this shit instead of talking about economic stuff that's you know like absolutely fucking our country from behind the scenes and like ensuring that we will lose our place as global hegemon within the next few years. Uh, did you have a response, Jack? Yeah, no, just to kind of build on that a little bit. Like I, I, the, the Republican party is on a trajectory to become just an outright fascist party. And in order, like part of that there, is maintaining personally. outgroups within society. And guess what? We're the outgroup. Trans people are one of the weakest segments of society mm -hmm. that can be ostracized relatively easily to a large majority of Republicans, uh, along with like migrants, like mm -hmm. whether they're illegal or you know or undocumented or think. documented, it doesn't matter. Um, well, yeah, yeah. So... Now that Joe Biden's in power, we have to all focus on the you know migrant crisis that we've suddenly decided to care about again, uh, at least amongst the Republicans. That's happening at the border, right? Exactly. Or for example, uh, Stephen Crowder's unbelievably racist rant against you know uh people of color farmers right when they were mm -hmm. getting uh some assistance from the government so they can and focus on so this stripping... culture war bullshit does definitely play into economic policy but like mm -hmm. they want to focus on the the cultural aspect of the us versus theming of it all well yeah because that means that they don't have to materially improve any of the conditions they can just focus on throwing all the civil all our civil rights under the bus and well you have to create worth a... for, worse for a minority yeah, to make a successful political party, you have to have an us versus them, right? And you can't have an economic us versus them with a conservative party because, you know, your your enemy is on your, your team, technically. So let's go to Samantha. And, okay, and so, I'm not sure if your hand is, is up, Demon. It's just your uh, pen. Out. Okay, sure, Samantha. All right, so I don't... I'm don't going crazy. I don't know if anybody remembers, like, before I had my, you know, like, come to jesus you know come to the left moment um if if anybody remembers me like last year um when i was definitely more right leaning uh definitely more yikes um i felt like there was a lot of yeah I'm i felt talk like about the, that the right had made me feel like there was a place for me there 
Um, obviously, I knew that they were about legislating things against me and taking my rights as a way as a trans person, um, as a, a queer, you know, all these things. But at the same time, when I moved to California from Oklahoma and I had, you know, stuff like my guns and my business and stuff like that. And I, and I moved into a place with a bunch of other, you know, trans people and leftists that I thought would be accepting of me because I'm trans and they flipped out because I had fucking guns. And, and like I, I was thrown out because of that and i thought it was the dumbest shit and it pissed me off and you know so i was like fine fuck it like this just pushed me more away more away and like i felt like you know and a lot of people have said it before like the left can be kind of stupid sometimes i'm not saying like the leftists but i'm gonna say like i'm gonna specify liberals and democrats and sock them trash bags in there too um but like they can be so fucking like if you're not perfect on that purity fucking test like there, there's Zing. no talking to you. There's no fucking changing anything. It's just fucking stream. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and I felt like people on the right were more willing to stream? talk to me. And then, stream dead? you know, the more and more and more I kind of like went down that path. It's like, okay, now you're just trying to use me as a token. Like, look, we're we're good. We're accepting a trans should people. Be look, fine. we're good. Like, should be fine. Everybody. We have a trans person that's friends with us. And 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 all. Look, we're accepting it's just like... and your guns and your business and and lowering business taxes and making you more profitable and able to live. And it's like. But you're only doing it so that you look better. There's no intention to actually help people like me, and it fucking pissed me off. But I, but I feel like, like there 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 is no place in the Republican Party, or obviously the far right, the alt right, and all that too. Um, even though they fetishize us, um, there, there's no real place because all they're going to do is keep doing things to hurt us. But at the same time, I I still think there could be a place and should be a place for a trans woman along the lines of like libertarian socialists or stuff like that. Like, do I agree with every platform that libertarian socialist is, but like, I believe if they're going to push actual personal liberties, like seeing how they react to a bunch of trans people entering their movement would either make them put up or shut the fuck up. Um, and I, I don't know. I'm just gonna kind of a little jaded i'm 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 an ex right-leaning person but i i have still unlearning pretty shitty things but i feel like there is a uh, no place in the current um republican party uh demon mom yeah i just wanted to, to talk on one thing that um dr k brought up which is the idea that like they uh, push culture war issues as a distraction i I think that's a side effect. I think that they really do care about these things. Um, and it clearly sells to their audience. Um, to a lot of right-wingers, culture war is the only war. Um, they don't care about the economy. They would welcome a king that told them what they want. Um, it is just about power. And if they have to cheat to get there, well, they've already been doing that for a long time, haven't they? Um, I think that that's something that people need to realize going forward, that we are going up against a ruthless opponent, a, a, a group that is willing to say – to make a common meme that Trump is the god emperor of their movement. There are a lot of unironic monarchists. There are a lot of unironic theocrats among the American right. Um, and I think that a lot of people underestimate the American right thinking that it's mostly just people who, you know, they're well-intentioned and they're economically conservative. No, they're not. They are socially conservative. That is the backbone of the movement. It always has been. It always will be um, mm -hmm. until we defeat that and i think that like to a certain degree we need to dominate that culture war because their points are going to continue i mean we were just talking about the stephen crowder thing today stephen crowder has almost six million subscribers on youtube his influence is massive and he is churning out a perpetual uh narrative of 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 cultural um apocalypse um and so did Rush Limbaugh, and so does Tucker Carlson. This is what they sell. And I mm -hmm. hope that people, especially on the left, will realize that um, because I am afraid of what that means. I think that when you have a an entire political party of people who are willing to get behind basically any type of government structure as long as they're winning the culture war in their minds and the degenerates aren't taking over, well, that's pretty scary because they will get behind stuff like a, like a raw fascist, won't they? Okay, uh, mix between Wolf and then uh, Jack, uh, and then Alice, and then Jack. Yeah, and Demon Mama started going in the direction I was going to go, but like, um, 
So it's like a there's obviously a variety of motivations on the right, and it really depends on like where you are in sort of the social scale. But absolutely, like the culture war is a huge part of right wing thought. Um, but I think it I think it comes uh, mostly as a, a for those like further down on the uh, on the, in 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 sort of like the class hierarchy. I think it comes as a a way to feel that you're winning, right? And in order to feel that you're winning, you have to have something to fight over. So you basically just pitch, pick whatever the fucking left is pushing and just be like, well, the left side is the bad side, so we have to oppose the bad side and not really think about it all that much. It's a very sports ball way of fucking thinking about politics, which is unfortunately how a lot of people on, on in the United States think about politics. You know, they're all like uh, drinking by cups of liberal tears, lol, 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 right? Like, as long as the left is crying we're winning we're winning and uh and what better way to keep the left from uh from ever winning than to have some kind of authoritarian dictator um i think it's it's, it's a real huge fucking hodgepodge honestly but it's yeah the culture war is a huge part of things i don't think it's just a distraction mm. okay uh, uh alice and then um jack that's johnny so I, I guess my, my, my only uh, pushback here is that uh, exactly what we're talking about could be said by anybody who is right wing or conservative, just talking about left wing uh, groups, um, like literally exactly, we could just flip flop it. Um, like all that the left wants to do is cancel people. All that they want to do is, you know, uh, put, put, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say uh, what they'd say, but anyway. Yeah, you know, but my policies don't get people killed. Okay, difference. but that doesn't matter. So, so I, I get what you're saying, but remember, the perspective you're coming from is a, your own perspective, and it's a perspective that's informed by your experience. But a lot of I people know, on, on the saying. right, they don't have that experience. So the experience they have instead is they have the experience of, well, all of these leftists, they're they're t they're going in our bathrooms, and they're they're gonna go take over sports, and then they're gonna make mm -hmm. it so we can't grow corn. They're they're literally just like you know, these are just all nonsensical right to to a lot of people nonsensical but they're like easy attacks right because it's very hard i don't know if you've been in like gender critical spaces it's very hard to argue against anti-trans views that are informed in any way because mm -hmm. the way that they are informed is very good at radicalizing people and the same thing is true of most other things on the far right and far left they're very very good at radicalizing people um so i think the problem is that a lot of us are sort of radicalized left um and because of that it's very hard to see what it looks like to somebody who is radicalized right. Um, uh, and I think a lot more people fit that that group of radicalized right wing, you know, viewpoints. Uh, I think I that could probably just, speak to this a little not... bit. Like uh, speak, mo speak to... I could probably speak to the to the point you're making a little bit. I, I grew up in a far right uh, evangelical cult. Um, huh? and um, I don't entirely agree with what you're analyzing here. The the, the much of the lies that are used by the right require uh, a consistent reinforcement and drowning out of, of any sort of fact or reality. Um, and that is not the case um, on the left for the most part. Um, uh, I, I see you shaking your head, but I know for a fact that you're wrong about this. Indoctrination uh. is... Uh, is a key part of how the right works. If you so is the left. Mm, no, actually, <laughs> yeah, that's identical. Not true. So, so, no, it so, really so is not I've, at all. I would, demon mama, de demon mama. I found I've, the I've disagreement, debate. but that's okay. Uh, I've, I've, I've talked to. So first off, uh, same actually uh, for the childhood thing. Nice, uh, you know, plus one. Um, I, I also grew up. I don't in know a what pretty, that's supposed uh, to mean, but I, I also grew up in a conservative evangelical cult. So nice. Um, uh, second what off, is what um, is that supposed to mean? Are you trying to make like a like she's a? She's being nice. She's being nice to you. Oh, it's are okay. you being nice or are you being sarcastic? Because it sounds sarcastic to me. Uh, I guess it's just a weird thing to 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 call out when multiple people can share your experience. Like yes, for instance, I, you and I share that experience. Yes, but I, I wasn't. Yeah. Uh, I believe I was just bringing up relevant experience, but sure, if you want to do that. Fair, fair enough. Yeah, I, I've I've the same identical. So um, oh, yeah. I, I've been in uh, for about uh, not 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 all that long, but I've been re relatively entrenched in in uh, like gender critical spaces for about four months or five months of like raw time of just hanging out in those spaces and talking. Uh, and um, 
that can get a little bit uh, spicy. So I've been I've been talking to those people and try to understand where they're coming from and why they're coming from those spaces. And you said uh, basically like, well, they require, you know, like um, they have to, you know, m lie or make things up or, or et cetera, um, you know, that they're not mm -hmm. based on facts. The mm -hmm. problem is that uh, to their view, neither are, uh, you know, pro-trans people. They're not basing things on facts. They're using actual evidence, they're using studies, they're using, you know, real information that backs their points very effectively. And I will happily have that discussion with you sometime, and I'll happily get canceled on here because I can defend those points very effectively. I mean, you can, um, yeah, but the, the, what you're saying is you're taking their claims at face value. Of course, no. anybody who's trying to be convincing is going to say that they have everything on their side, obviously, literally. And, and if you, you, wait, hold on a second. Yes, I'm saying that literally everybody will do that. Anybody who wants to be huh? convincing is going to claim that they have things on their side, but you have to yeah. ask who is correct and who actually yes, and does, and they don't. When you talk- You're not you... objectively correct. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, but you're absolutely wrong about this. When you ask a transphobe or a gender critical, gender person, critical person um, what, 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 what they're basing their information off of, they will bring you up studies that are 40 year old debunked studies. I've done this 100,000 times. I've been doing this forever. Now, um, I've, I've lurked in these spaces. This is what I do every single day. There is, there is so many examples of this. Let me give you some, some like ones just off the top of my head that aren't even related to this exact topic. If you want to talk about, um, let's talk about Prager U and what they use to talk about anti against green energy. They bring up this, um, bullshit statistic about birds getting shredded by windmills when we there's that's already been studied extensively and all you have to do is paint the windmill a different color than the color of the sky and it fixes the problem they don't ever actually do this in fact we've even gone on my on my channel as a as an uh uh as an exercise we've gone and looked through the the um uh the the source sheets for b things like uh, prager you prager you will cite their own videos in the the video that you're watching in the sources for the video that you're watching it's actually mm -hmm. ridiculous so no it, it i do not buy the idea that there is like an equivalence between the right and left on this i do believe there are sects of the left perhaps that uh lean on certain forms of indoctrination like i would argue like stalinism but that is hardly even predominant it is it is the one of the characteristic parts of the right is to rely on tradition and not science, not any sort of rationality whatsoever. That is core to a lot of right wing movements. Okay. Just to, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to, so let's go. Yeah. Jack, Johnny. Um, right. And then, uh, Oh, I, I got to get going like five, oh, okay. five oh, okay. minutes. Like Dr. K first. Yeah. I'm just going to say like, you know, an easy counteraction of that is it is like an observable fact that as you go, and see more and more diverse communities, the like uh, number of membership amongst the Republican Party like noticeably goes down. Like when people are exposed to different ideas and are in spaces this with multiple this, thoughts, this person doesn't know what she's talking about. Or multiple schools of thought, okay. like it literally kills off conservative ideology. Mm. So like I, I'm like that's a complete bullshit line that it, you know. There's that yeah, sort of people, both rely on indoctrination, my ass. Most people on the right, uh, or at least the right, does rely on the like isolation of people. Just like backing up what Demon Mama was saying, because you were speaking specifically about TERFs, like if we can, uh, some of the most prominent More TERF myths, right? Uh, or propaganda tactics, such as the cotton ceiling, for example, like these are these are literal myths. Right, the mm -hmm. cotton ceiling myth is about uh, some Planned Parenthood meeting that supposedly took place like a few years back. That was um, supposedly about how trans women could get into the pants of um, lesbians, and it had a, and it literally had fuck all to do with that. It was like this small meeting, uh, seven people attended, I think, uh, and the discussion was around like feeling uh, feeling comfortable in your own bodies and like shame within LGBT communities. So it's like it's really just fucking bizarre to me that you would that you would say that like there's there's this preponderance of evidence and right. science. And, and one more thing, I wanted to add to this before we move add that on. One more thing, I mean, I got to want to go to Jack and John. Yeah, that's fine. Um, in this per in this exact conversation that we are that we're like commenting on this Blair White situation, we have an example of this multiple times. These the two most right wing people, the most avowed right wing people on the panel. Both bring up uh, it, 
globo homo which is a a conspiracy theory that's so patently false it's so hilariously false um and so objectively false that it's 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 unbelievable to me that there would be anybody here trying to claim that like the right is using facts no they don't they don't care about facts they will make up any lie uh, like, I mean, we just experienced an election in which the entire time was them lying, just bald-faced lying, despite 60 losses in court, just saying, oh, well, th this was a stolen election and blah, blah, blah. It is unbelievable. Misinformation and, and indoctrination is just rampant on the right in America. It's rampant. So, so we're going to Jack, Johnny, and then Red Charlie. So part of this is um, that re I, I, conservative ideology relies heavily on theater in a way that um, I, I don't think that even liberal or leftist ideology relies on theater. Um, like, for example, one of the people on that panel had like three, has like 300,000 subscribers on his channel. And he's True, basically Nazi adjacent. Like that that's basically the his, person arguing his ideology that the right has in a good nutshell. studies is nowhere and near as skeptical as I'm they just putting this be. out there that like Tucker Carlson repeats these things too. You know, a lot of the a lot of conservatives have to keep going back to those wells because it's a lot easier so for them much, to get Kansama. angry about trans people being pedophiles in their bathrooms or um, you know, gay gay people, what's the deal? Like it's a lot easier for them to get angry about that stuff than it is to be angry about Oh, some fiscal policy that might have like a two point five percent impact on their lives. You know, like yeah, it appeal it appeals to those um it appeals to those pre existing prejudices, those fears and those uh those uh traditional understandings of of things. That's how it works. Yeah, it's yeah. massive. Yeah. It gets them. It gets all of like confirmation bias, just constantly pumping sh shit out to like um validate the previous opinions that they already held and try and radicalize them further down well and, and, and it's actually I, to, to Sorry, alice's point um like i i do think that this happens sometimes on the left but i don't think it's anywhere comparable in magnitude like the conservative movement definitely goes no dr k is gone johnny's still here this. johnny's in the middle um like fox news is the most watched news network in the world and tucker carlson's lawyers had to go into court and basically say oh yeah anyone who would believe him as a news commentator uh isn't to be taken seriously because he's completely just an entertainer he's not he's not actually a news person yeah so like yeah. but they continue framing him as a news person and so i i just want to know like what you you seemed like you're kind of like standing up for like gender critical people. What 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 part of their ideology do you agree with? I, I'm curious. Right. So I don't actually. <clears throat> Thank I, you so much because I talk to someone and listen to them doesn't mean that I agree with their well, ideology. You said you would make their arguments for them. Yeah, because I learned their arguments to the level of being able to make those. Thank arguments. you. So which arguments are good? Which really arguments are good, or what? Yeah, what do you, which ones do you agree with, or which ones? I I don't agree with them. Yeah, which ones? Are good arguments. In fact, that was it, sort of your argument. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. It seemed like, like you were agreeing things. with them, so I was curious. Right, right. So, so my my problem is that uh, to be able to convince somebody of something with th something that looks close enough to to a fact, right? So, so a study, for instance, Back that is from say the last fifteen years, for instance. Um, to be able to use a study, because uh, I know, uh, I, you know, I I heard what you're saying. I got it. You know, yes, forty year old studies, common tactic. You know, these studies are garbage. Agreed. Um, so the problem is that there are studies that back up a lot of um, these types of talking points that are more recent. Um, like what? Offhand, putting me on the spot trying to defend an ideology I don't agree with is very difficult. Well, you, um, you stepped up like to you, do that. You, you brought yeah. it up and said that they make I, good points, so I was just curious what... It's right. backpedal. I, I will work. be happy to to get on a on on a on a chat with you guys at some point and 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 go ahead and try that. Um, I will happily do that. I'll grab studies that I have. Um, happy to do that. Right now, offhand, uh, we would be able to argue some of the things that uh, we take for granted, like for instance, um, uh, arguing that uh, trans women are women is something that we take for a fact, right? But is uh, not something that has any basis in like objective reality for a lot of people um we have to twist a lot of definitions to do that um, no we do not their... all right all right hold up hold okay. up before we start going down the gender critical path yeah. um um i think i think we should start getting closing statements you're ruining yeah, a topic okay oh, hold on hold on, hold on. We, uh, johnny hold on, sorry, sorry johnny's never gotten a chance to go and um but but we will we'll move forward so go ahead uh johnny 
Okay, I'm going to make one point about y'all's points, and then if you don't mind, I'm going to make one point about the topic in general. So as far as Alice and Demon Mama are concerned, you're kind of talking past each other, because what Alice is saying is that she, like I've done with the incel community, she has lurked in that community. I don't think I ever heard her say that she agrees with the gender critical community. Oh, I never she said she did, though. Their I didn't but say But Demon that. Mama, I understand what you're saying, that the indoctrination is different, okay? And what y'all are kind of ignoring and I, I it's surprising that we haven't brought it up before but when I made my opening statement and I said social conservatism believes they will win despite not winning elections they mean their eternal soul they are literally the reason this is so quote unquote real for them is because they believe in something called the eternal soul and that they will be damned to eternal suffering and torture if they do not tell us to tell Blair White to grow out her mustache and shit like that. Like, they they are well, literally it, fighting... It they, like indoctrination. It, it is indoctrination. That's what I'm saying. And so when we talk about left indoctrination, we are really talking... Of, most of the time, we're not talking about religious indoctrination. We're talking about more like you know, ex accelerationist indoctrination or, or violent indoctrination in the far left. We're not really talking about fighting for your eternal goddamn soul in order to save trans people. You know, it usually goes the other way around. So that's the point I wanted to make. Um, also, as far as the overall topic goes, do we have a place as queer people, as trans people in the Republican Party? Like, that's... The most vocal of them are the most devout. The most vocal of them are the ones who genuinely believe that they are sucking on Jesus's ass and that they're going to go to heaven. And it's just like that girl Lauren said in the debate itself. She said, <laughs> excuse me, but she said, um, I believe her exact quote was, I like to win and save babies. Um, she, yeah, but what she means when she says win is win in her own brain like honestly i know that the authoritarianism is there because they don't actually want to have conservative american values they want to have conservative christian values and that's why i say things like you know i i kind of wish that you know someday if i decide to run for city council or something that i could run as a Rep as the green gay republican basically because i i love happen. gun culture and uh i enjoy supporting people in my community via you know responsible fiscal policy and things like that but as it stands right now that religious divide wherein people think that I have to be damned for them to go to heaven is really strong. I, 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 huh, me? Oh, yeah, I forgot that I wanted to go. Okay, yeah, so um, I was, uh, damn, it's been so long, kind of forgot. Oh, yeah, well, never mind. Um, so, like, there's this huge disconnect, um, like I said earlier, between, like, what Republicans uh, think their party supports and what they support. So like, um, just like off the top, like off uh, the cuff or whatever, like Republicans, like 90, 80% of Republicans think their party supports protecting pre-existing conditions, right? So like, even if Republicans support something, they, uh, like someone was talking, uh, I forgot who, who was bringing up the whole, like, um, it's all like theater, right? The Republicans will say to their base, oh, um, we want these things for you, blah, 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 blah. But then they never vote. You know, Don't in worry, their interests, as again, by like Gillens and Page, they always vote on the side of rich people and like business interests. Uh, so, yeah, like it's all it's all Repu it's all theater to Republicans, especially their leaders. I So like so it is indoctrination. I, I, I agree, but I also just want to push back a little bit on what Johnny said, because I think that while it is theater, that doesn't mean that it's like inconsequential theater. And it, when this Lauren person says that she wants to win i don't think she's just talking about like in Dr. a spiritual is out. sense had to go she does want to win in that sense i agree that a lot of uh conservative christians want to win in that sense but they do genuinely very much care about winning in a political sense this is how they've managed to maintain a voting block for the past like 60 years um and it, it's because they want to win tangibly mm. Why don't we take this opportunity to uh, directly just transition because uh, we were going in this direction in which way on to the next topic. Um, is that okay, Samantha? Yeah, that, that sounds great. This will give uh, Alice her moment to uh, do what she wanted to do. 
Okay. Yeah. Can uh, I have a word on Blair White before we finish? Oh, please, go ahead, sure. Sure, so I used to know Blair White back in, um, like, 2013, 14, something like that. Uh, we palled around on the same um, gaming forum for a little while. Uh, her screen name was uh, ChurchGirl69 at the time. Um, <laughs> this was before she started making YouTube videos and shit. She was a liberal. And watching the panel um, the other day, uh, I I was close to tears on like numerous occasions um because you know she she went through some shit like half a fucking family rejected her uh for being trans um and then she like made this youtube video it was all about how uh there are like advantages and disadvantages to being viewed as a woman and viewed as a man uh by society uh and the anti-feminists uh who were absolutely rife on youtube at the time still are i suppose um like jumped on and love bombed her uh and i feel she she found that she like found somewhere where she could be accepted um and sort of got like basically pulled into just like me and i'm not i'm not saying like she didn't also see the opportunity for making money and all that sort of stuff um but really yeah she was in a she was in a shit place um and she got pulled into the right and that doesn't excuse all the fucking horrible shit that she's uh done and said over the years um but at the end of the day like she still is uh she still is one of my one of my trans sisters and i and i do care and i do want her to stop doing the shit that she's doing uh and there is a space for her to you know make amends and move move sort of uh to toward a more trans positive position in her thinking i'm not going to say leftwards but like you know it's not going to um and she did say I that just, yes uh, I, and I think it's been demonstrated that there just isn't really a solid place for trans people um, in the Republican Party or in the right. They're just going to suffer abuse wherever they fucking go in those spaces. Um, and I think that's that's horrible to see for any trans person looking for some kind of acceptance and community uh, to be stumbling around the right trying to find it when it doesn't exist there. I just really quickly want to clarify for a lot of people I see in the chats are wondering how this has relevance to the Blair White video. We're not doing like a react to the Blair White video. We're talking about the rhetoric that is kind of used by Blair in the video, used at Blair in the video, and surrounding Blair and, and the type of trans in that type of community. Um, so it's not directly a, like a react Andy. We're reacting to direct comments. A lot of these comments have a lot of deeper things that, that affect the trans community. And that's what I wanted to address. Cause like addressing Blair white, you can go see 4,000 videos of that on YouTube. Who gives a shit, including mine. Um, I want to address the rhetoric and the talking points used at and by her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. So why don't we, uh, like directly transition to, uh, the, uh, next thing, um, uh, where do conservatives get their hatred for LGBTQ, uh, people? Uh, from as they are not all Christian. So yeah, not all um, anti-LGBTQ arguments are like based in the Bible. Um, so like, uh, where do you think uh, these conservatives are getting that from? Um, go ahead, uh, Johnny. It's exactly what I said again in my opening. They inherently sexualize anyone who even associates themselves with being feminine, with uh, looking feminine. Um, and that's why they associate us with pedophiles. That's why they associate us with degeneracy of a sexual nature. Um, it is it, to conserve the family structure is to uh, say that I, um, as, a, as a born female person, have some sort of intrinsic sick duty to procreate and that it is also my duty to pass that procreation do dogma onto the children that I pull into this world. And honestly, like when I said it revolts me, it fucking revolts me. Um, they are conserving the most base biological shit that people are going to do anyway. They just want you to do it the way they want you to do it. Okay. Um, so I'm not looking at my screen. Yeah. Um, go ahead, uh, Red Charlotte. Yeah, so uh, my friend uh, Meme Guider, uh, Meme Guider on Twitter, uh, he brought up a really good point that like biblical values, Christian values permeate in society way past like people who just believe in say. Christianity. Yep. Like even on, I've been having like uh, 
I am uh, suspended from Twitter. I don't have an alt. Uh, so I've been arguing with people um, <laughs> on Twitter uh, uh, about like cross dressing, and they just say, "Oh, it's gross, degenerate, and like men shouldn't wear girls' clothes." And I literally am just like, "Why?" And the only answer they can give is that it's degenerate and like unesthetic. <laughs> and like that's it. It's no deeper than they just think it's gross. There's no like a any like rash disgust. any like yeah. data or like um justification they give. It's all post hoc. It's all like not it it's just to like justify that they feel icky. They don't like it when people break outside of boxes. It makes them uncomfortable. That's it. Like it's no deeper than that. Yeah. Um I, I tend to agree in general. Uh like the, the disgust factor, the sort of like base emotional, unanalyzed emotional response is a huge motivating factor. It's, you know, I don't understand this thing and therefore it must be bad. But I don't think that it's it's easy to separate the history of, of the party from where it is right now. Um like you said, uh you you, you know, Charlotte, you hit the nail on the head um with regard to uh how at least especially here in america but in many other places the the religious backbone um has set the platform and everyone else has had to sort of fall in line with that i mean remember like it, it it's been you know anti-gay marriage was on the platform this year and supposedly in the the pro lgbt trump era um they had take you know take down gay marriage um it's 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 pretty wild how much they dictate the actual policies and the standards. And I mean, just because the their religious views are incoherent or they're hypocritical doesn't necessarily mean that they're not influenced heavily by those those views. They are aiming um, to recreate a fictionalized version of the past, which was directly inspired by these sort of religious beliefs. Um, so even if they're not super religious folks, I mean we all know that Nazis love the hell out of, uh, their, um, their like stolen Vogue, uh, Odin runes and all that, whatever. Um, all the, uh, the like Norse stuff that they appropriate. They don't know anything about it. They don't worship these gods or anything. They don't have any, it's, it's just, it's, it is an aesthetic. It's a, it's a post hoc justification to find their, a way to act out their prejudice and it's reinforced with thought terminating cliches um things like oh well it's just not natural which means you can write off any argument on this vague idea of something not being natural or or it's degenerate which is again an uh it's a vague concept that allows you to stop thinking about something and dismiss it out of hand thought terminating cliche cliches are hugely hugely important to indoctrination and they are they are all over the place on the right in fact i would argue most of their talking points are based directly off of thought terminating cliches aka uh ways to drive people to think in a certain way and approach the world in a certain way i think it's very concerning and and you know something i stand against obviously jack so i i think to add on top of whatever one has already said because i think it, it's all on point, i will be right back i need um, to go to the bathroom it's also just that the history of our society has built up a lot of internalized prejudices whether that is um, within religion, which it definitely there is, or in like just secular society, which also, yeah, like, I mean, just take a look at the media from the past like 50 years. Anytime it like talks about like LGBTQ people, any anytime, anytime like queer people show up in a movie, like just look back at when we were kids, okay, growing up. Um, most often we were portrayed as weird, deviant, the butt of jokes. I remember growing up as a kid, like gay was being used as a slur and an insult for people who were being bad at video games. Um, like th this is something that is still really recent and still really ingrained into wider society. So like, it's not just the religious institutions. It's not just, you know, the, the different um, ways that insulated communities think it's not just Republicans. It happens too with a ton of Democrats. Um, and it, it is this idea that like, if you are, uh, you know, like, I, I don't know if you're like a Mrs. Doubtfire type, you're a joke. You know, if you're, if you're wearing like clothes, clothes that you're not supposed to be wearing, you're, you're deviant and you deserve scorn. Like even, like even in the 1960s, like in New York, they were arresting people who weren't wearing the mandated three, th minimum of three gendered uh, 
clothing items. If you weren't wearing a minimum of three items that you were supposed to be wearing in public, you could get you could get arrested and thrown in prison for that. Um, so like it's not that long ago that like this stuff was considered not just like deviant in a social sense, but literally criminal. And so I, I think that's something to keep in mind too, that like it, it's all a learning process for a lot of people. Like I didn't grow up learning anything about trans people. I had to learn all that myself. And like most people, even in our generation, um, still don't grow up learning anything about trans people. Sorry about that, everybody. And so this hatred of like trans and gay people, I don't think it's inherent. Like it, it has roots in religion, you know, but you know, those roots aren't entirely applicable now because religion has wide ranging uh, cultural influences too. And I think that uh, it's going to be a long while. A lot of learning has to be done by people both within the LGBTQ community and without it um, about how trans people work, what trans people even are. Um, and yeah, that that takes Sounds work. Like some it base takes takes time. Have dropped. And frankly, a lot of Republicans and a lot of people who have decided to be bigoted because they just have a gut uncomfortable feeling about seeing somebody in the quote unquote wrong clothes or um you know they they, they get uncomfortable and it's, it's much good. easier for them to feel a little spicy angry about feeling uncomfortable and having their identity questioned than it is like just questioning and learning right yeah so. but at least all that you know homophobia and media gave us uh sexy queer coded villains right i mean so. that's true that's true i, I we'll keep them I'm I'm under the um, like um under the thought that like a lot of the the non-religious um right has in like unintentionally become bigoted through the integration of the religious right into the um Republican party. So e even though like they didn't uh, like intentionally go out and seek religion and get these views off of like a religious background the way like the 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 Christian conservatives like to stout like um these people were inadvertently um indoctrinated through the christian conservatives kind of like weaseling their way into the republican party and trying to take over um that's just my thought on that hmm. anyone else uh like uh what do you all think this this comes from uh, or is it just um uh christianity by another name I mean, I mean, we do live in a highly like Quaker Puritan, and I wouldn't even put that on the Quakers. Quakers are pretty Quaker, nice people. No, no um, they're, those are pretty nice people. But Puritan society, you know, permeates American culture, and it, we have we have spaces in America that are so like small and densely packed and out of the way with just people who are related to each other you know like any sort of deviation from even like the the slightly wonky bloodline in some places in america is gonna get you like ousted from the general community and so to display a behavior that has been ingrained in our culture to be absolutely unspeakable up until maybe 10 15 years ago you know not only to be gay and to be what you were quote unquote born as but to be something else entirely that people don't have a word for when they don't experience dysphoria like you know people it's it's a small-mindedness somebody somebody said earlier that it's you know something akin to small-mindedness in the culture and and I completely agree with that. Now we have like resurgences of third genders and extra genders coming around in a lot of indigenous communities that have been almost wiped out by imperialism. And uh, I'm especially happy for the Mahu people in Hawaii. Um, those are, those people are being able to practice their culture again after being suppressed by the white Christian hegemony for a very long time. And so I don't think that, I certainly don't think that it's like something that's ingrained in people to be against different gender nonconforming experiences. Not certainly not people in general, but you know, we are talking about the general English speaking West. And so we have to put it in a puritanical aspect most of the time. Yeah. I, I, I think that, um, I don't know. It's kind of complicated because 
on one hand you do have like this sort of insert like uh, this sort of like surge of of the online alt-right kitties who like uh kind of got swooped up in the trump train and whatever and found themselves in the republican party and whatever uh but i don't think a lot of them I, I think a lot of them just don't know the history of the party they're they're working with, and I think that's intentional in a lot of cases. I mean, after all, controlling access to history or presenting only a specific side of history is how you control someone's understanding of the world. Um, and I think a lot of them come in and they're like, "Oh yeah, like it's it's a secular party." Well, that's not true. The Rep the Republican Party has always been fueled by the religious right, like like extensively um always um and and it's wild to me that you see even like supposedly sexual or supposedly secular not sexual uh, uh, uh supposedly uh secular people um like even like the tucker carlson types um get all mad about the war on christmas and they have to do these things because the party is ultimately at its core ruled by a very conservative fundamentalist religious religious core and they don't have anything without that because uh it's uh, that's the problem with traditionalism that's the problem with with these types of 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 worldviews is that they require something to be pulling from and that thing is inevitably going to be uh something from the past that wasn't it, that, that hasn't adjusted to the future uh and it, it sort of presumes a a divine knowledge there's so much there's so much i could talk about with it but i i do feel that like um what what we're what we're seeing and we and again this conversation we're talking about here in addition to a couple of others that have happened this week are prime examples of that any small secularization that happened in the like 2016 push for trump has already been dis has already been disregarded you have milo is now ex-gay and he's going to support uh conversion therapy you have blair white talking about conversion therapy you have all of the big right-wing figures are starting to like lean into their christianity and being like yeah i'm trying to be a dave rubin is a christian now right isn't he didn't he say that he's now a christian like like holy moly it's actually ridiculous and i think that's going to become increasingly the case that there's not going to be you're not going to be allowed to be a republican if you're not a christian at some point and um i think it's a weird place for us to find ourselves in um but i think we need to understand indoctrination and we need to understand how these things actually function okay jack um yeah i mean i think i think that while uh, everything that demon mama just said is correct the fact is like the Republican party uses the veneer of being like a, like an impartial secular party to be able to get more people in, to be able to uh, pretend like their ideas aren't just religious, that they have some basis in fact. And for the most part, they don't, they, they don't have a basis. In fact, they don't have um, these ideas that actually help people. They have ideas that help the, the wealthy that that's pr predominantly their concern. And um, if they can help the wealthy by vilifying LGBTQ people, that's what they're gonna do. And like, guess what? They've been they've been politicizing religious folks for the past uh, like sixty years since the inception of the Southern strategy around the issue of abortion. And frankly, I like this is this is kind of the natural outcome of like their entire yep. political See you soon, bisexual strategy degenerate. for Thanks decades for by. and decades and decades. Um, and so. I, I find it very unsurprising that, yeah, it's radicalizing people into ever uh, more religious fervor over their political leadership. And it's unsurprising also that that is leading towards fascism. Um, yeah. And it's also very, like, just kind of a natural consequence. Like, yeah, that they, they're going to be against gay people because the underlying part of their political ideology that relies on religious conservatism uh also vilifies gay people so and and queer people of all kinds so i yeah. i mean i think yeah. i think it's important for us to sort of deny them the ability to add that veneer on i don't think we should give when conservatives say oh no my viewpoints are fact-based we should challenge that we should call that oh. out and say oh is that true um, oh, for and sure. That, but that's why they bring up like, Judeo-Christian never... values and yeah. all, they that, make all that up garbage. Terms, exactly. whatever. I mean, again, mm -hmm. remember the the core talking point from the, the Trump camp was that Joe Biden was a communist. 
Alex Jones has been screaming about Joe Biden being a chai com, a Chinese communist. Like they, there is no reality. There's not even a a a drop of it. And it's funny because there's this there's this attempt by people that I've encountered a lot, and this is something I've argued against a lot, to play equivalency between the American right and the American left, and there just is not one. There isn't an equivalency there. There is no, uh, all of the people, even even when people are like, oh yeah, well lefties online, terminally online lefties call everybody a Nazi. I'm like, okay, so you have like five children on Tumblr calling people a Nazi all the time, and then you have a bunch of people going, hey guys, guys, here's a, whole, a giant list of, 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 200 docu of 200 articles that have been written about the policies that Donald Trump is is putting in right now that are very very similar to fascist and or even Nazi uh, uh, policies. Here's a whole bunch of times where Donald Trump's guys literally used Nazi ide uh, Nazi quotes, Nazi ideology, Nazi rhetoric in order to push him forward. And then it's like, oh, the left is just screeching online. They're just both. It's the both sidesing stuff that drives me nuts. Why do we play this game? Why do we ever play this game? We know there's no equivalent. Even the worst, even the most screeching, like Stalinist, I can imagine, is is not even near to the level of of disinformation that the average Republican Fox News viewer is, and it is really that bad. Like, I mean, and I and again, some of this is some of this stuff. Like this little anecdote I'm going to share is like stuff that comes from my own personal connections. Who are still, you know, a lot of my family and my friends' family are are still in that. Like, I mean. I have a friend, somebody who I considered family at one point because I spent so much time with them, who was super laid back. They got into the Trump shit in 2016. Now they literally have an apoplectic meltdown if anyone even mentions the, 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 the what's it called, wet ass pussy. If they mention that song or play that song, this person has a meltdown and screams at their family because Tucker Carlson told them it was degeneracy. Like, it's yeah, not, I'm Yeah. It's sad. It's part of a carefully cultivated media environment uh, that the right has been um, putting together, you know, since the Reagan period, uh, since the advent of Fox News and the um, and and national radio with like Rush Limbaugh and stuff. Yes, I can it see does. it giggling up there with the carefully cultivated media environment shit. But it's true. Like this was this was like legitimately uh, the um, fuck. Uh, the whole point of like getting Rush Limbaugh on national radio was to bring the GOP platform to national media was to like saturate people's fucking airwaves mm. with it, so yeah. that they're spending every day commuting to and from work listening to this fucking asshole's voice on the radio. And thank fuck he's dead now, doing a little dance, pissing on his grave. Um, yeah, people but, should like, look into people but, should look into the sort of uh, spinoffs, <laughs> the sort of careers that Rush Limbaugh started in America. Yeah, yeah. But it's, but it's a real but interesting it's, story. It's, yeah, yeah maybe, but, but him dying should, uh... doesn't like signal the end of it. Like the damage has been fucking maybe, done. Maybe, no, that, yeah. they'll just replace him. They'll just put Steven Crowder on a fucking radio show. They'll just oh, put like Jesus fucking Milo Christ. on a radio show. They'll give these fuckers another platform. Maybe yeah. it's a maybe it's a bad um, sign when Holocaust survivors are saying, "Hey, yeah, the Republican Party is kind of looking like Nazis." Uh, let's go to um uh, uh Johnny uh, and then Red Charlie. Okay. Um, I just wanted to point out that we've got one person, and I believe it was Jack, saying that uh, the Republicans want to have this veneer of Thank secularism so and truthism. And then we have, you know, of course, Thank Demon you. Mama and a couple of other people saying that they want to have this spiritual, you know, you know, shit that guides them, that makes them feel superior. And the answer is both. I think that yeah, really contributes that, to the disinformation and, and the overall just grift of the Republican Party in general because they want to be both. They want to not only be facts and logic, facts don't care about your feelings, but they also want their religious quote unquote information to be put at the forefront of everyone's mind as some sort of scientific basis for reality just because some book that was written by God knows who 2000 years ago says that you ought to love your wife and and respect your husband and they took that as you know the absolute biological truth like they want both and and that's I mean, why it's so I, I confusing it's just, and hard to fight against i just i i don't know if it's so much that they really like i mean i don't again we're getting into intentions here and that's always impossible territory but i don't even know if they so much i mean they do want it to to have their cake and eat it too but it's not out of any love for science or any desire or 
adherence to rationality. They're just Machiavellian enough to realize that if they tell people that their studies are legit, no one will ever look at the page to see that they're citing their own video. Like, again, yeah. like, I've done this just to show to my audience. I do this as an exercise all the time where we go, all right, chat, why don't we check the sources? And we just go and look and see what they actually, they just don't put anything. Sometimes they'll cite, like, oh, God, it's ridiculous. It's embarrassing. And, and... I, the, yeah, they want to have the veneer, but it's a veneer. And I don't think that we should, mm. like, pretend that it's, like, that some of them are trying to be rational. They're not. They're just finding anything and everything that they can to push their worldview forward. And they're just Machiavelli enough to embrace it. Oh, okay, so I want to I wanna really quick say something. Sibri TV, I've seen you in my chat before. I know that you're a good faith actor. And when you say they are describing the left on the other side, I appreciate that comment. Here is the difference, my dude heaven and the shit that they base their shit around doesn't mm, in my coffee. physical world exist it's not something that i can base my life around but i am a trans person i am a non-binary person and i'm sitting right the fuck in front of you in this camera i exist and there's no way to deny that and so the idea, I think that what Demon Mama spoke to on the last topic when she said that, you know, this is this is not something that can say that the progressive left or the social left is is based in the same shit as the far right. We're not. We're based in reality. We're fighting for our literal existence while other people are fighting for fiction. Yep. Um, uh, let's, sorry. Let's, do, uh, uh, let's go to Red Child has been waiting. And then I ha actually have a question uh, for you all. Um, go ahead. All right, so like this Alice whole been thing quiet. that keeps coming up about like the equivalency, where like oh, it's it happens on both sides. Yeah, sure. As an absolute, some people on the left spread fake news. Some people on the left believe dumb shit, right? But the thing is, we don't have to guess. We don't have to use anecdotes. We don't have to use conjecture in, in this like conversation at all. Like, I even sent some stuff to Vivian the other night. Like, this is empirically verified. People on the right disproportionately consume fake news to, like, an extent, an incredible, like, disproportionate amount. They uh, are more likely to believe fake news. Uh, they live in, like, media echo chambers. Like, they push this narrative of Coffee. left echo chambers when we can literally empirically verify that right-wingers live inside a Breitbart, Fox News, OAN bubble. Uh, that is like a self-feeding like system where you just get fed like like force-fed literal fucking dog shit uh, until your brain is like fucking sludge. Um, like people like on the right fighting over whether or not. Yeah, I changed it to something else. And spreading news about SB one forty five, where they're telling people that California is legalizing pedophilia. Right? They See? believe the most wacko fucking nonsense shit in the entire in the whole world. It's a right? darkwood one right and now. And there's no equivalency. I'll probably add a new like, one soon. On the left, I like to change like, it up every in once mainstream. in a while. Sure, in like fringes, I'll, I'll like grant someone this. Right? Darkwood is good maybe as in fuck. like an ML community, they'll they'll believe some like wacko fucking shit. Uh, that Amer they they say America did like that they can't even prove right. But like the difference is one is mainstream and one isn't right. Tens of millions of people believe that like uh, i think like 10 percent of americans believe that um uh what's alex jones's fucking show called uh th they think alex jones is a reliable news source that's one out of every 10 people this like there is something like again like i talked about earlier we want to talk about cultural degradation right historically whether you want to talk about the lying press or the fight against academia right-wing ideology like has always been anti-intellectual, anti-academia, and anti-institutions, right? Because they frame these things as degenerate and evil and working against the common interests of, like, man, right? It's, like, it, it, this has just, like, been history, and it's just repeating itself over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, Alice, did you have your hand up? Um, I wasn't sure if you, you did. Um... Yeah, yeah, but we, we keep going over every single topic I've tried to respond to, so it's not really... Uh, I mostly agree with everybody here, so there's really not any point in me adding any nuance here. <laughs> I have some nuance to add in some of these things. We keep going over each one. Like, when I said there there's similarities, I don't mean that I agree with these insane, you know, right-wing views. I mean that there are similar tactics, similar rhetoric being used. Um, and to claim that, like, they have absolutely no basis in, in fact for themselves is just ignoring the nuance that we really do need to have if we want to convince people and try to give us one, then. people. Give us which one. is all I'm trying to say is that when we claim that, like, these people are, you know, like, just making shit up, 
like, okay, that's not actually helpful to de-radicalize people, which is literally all I'm trying to talk about is like, say, yeah, I get what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. There's a lot of crazy shit on the right. Agreed. 100% true. But on the other hand, there's also stuff that is based in what they see as factual and what has no easy way of dismissing as non-factual. There are views that have some nugget of truth that's close enough that people are going to believe it. Can I give you an example? Yeah, something that has like a basis in a nugget of truth. Thank you so much, Eggy Egg. Very happy to have you. Yeah, sure. Um, Okay, so we would all agree that trans women are women, but we have to fundamentally take a definition of gender that doesn't agree with a lot of people's definition of gender. It's not based in any kind of fact. It's simply a semantic argument. Yes, it is. Yes, it is continually a semantic argument and a semantic argument that gets people in trouble for having it. So that's a good example of of a view that is very, very difficult to talk about on their side and very difficult to talk about on our side it isn't difficult well. to talk about this is where i don't agree with you the the it's, it's a simple thing to talk about the reality is that it is a fact that gender is a social construct that gender and sex are different concepts even if some but people it's not. yes it, let's have the gender and sex debate sometime. it's a pretty well established wait wait no no you're 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 that... you're arguing against literal reality right now which is why i'm getting okay. ir- irked oh. Okay, Along let me respond. Women, the consensus. concept of woman is definitionally a social construct. Yes, it is. Okay, so okay. I'm so sorry, you're wrong that. if you claim let me, let me otherwise. That's to, to claim that language. To you, okay, let me respond to you then. And, and this, and we, and just to, you know, we were actually going to go to a topic about uh, can you be both transgender and gender critical. Um, so this seems to be going that sort of direction. So here we go. But go ahead, please. Oh, awesome. So it, I agree with you. Gender is a social construct. What is the social construct of gender based on? I'm sorry, what? What is the social construct of gender based on? Language. No, it's based on sex, and it's based no, it on isn't. language defining sex. Yes, it is. No, it, it's a chicken sorry, and an egg not. argument. You're not no, going to be able to take this in an hour, in the hour you, and a half you just that we have left. You are in not trying to, to argue able. with me, you conceded your point, which is the fact that it okay. is a fact that, yeah. so, that gender is a social construct. The reality okay. is that there are ways to engage with these things that are um totally productive and this can happen on the left by the way because there are different positions on gender and sex on the left and you can have that conversation you can't have that conversation with someone who thinks that god declared what woman is and that it is an objective fact that woman is the rib the rib of adam or if they don't even go that far they don't even know what it is they just have some weird idea in their mind of essentialized gender that there's a woman's soul and a man's soul Uh I'm sorry, but you, about, you don't, don't understand. That concept. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. You don't understand people. what you're talking about. You're, you're, yes, you've, I do. No, no, no. You've come on here and you've, you've made summarily a, rejected you, me without you've understanding made, my You've position. made a lot of claims about I have the, no the similarities between the sides. Let, and let, let, her, okay. let her finish. So um, uh, go ahead. Finish, finish your point, um, uh, Demon Mama, and then you can respond, Alice. I'll give you time to respond completely. Yeah. You've come on and you've made claims pl- trying to play uh, into this narrative that the right loves to push that they're like the left and the right are totally equivalent that there's a that there is something equivalent about um, and our disagreements about the the actual definition of gender will have how we should use that how we should define woman etc versus people who literally do cannot engage and will not engage in that conversation who believe that even to ask the question of what a woman is is to doubt God or to doubt some other uh, sacrosanct um situation you've failed to give an example of any of when asked by multiple people like where any example i just don't think you understand the right and 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 i think that you're you're giving them uh undue credence that is contributing to the problem that we have in our society which is continually playing sort of this game of amnesia of pretending that the right doesn't just lie because they have a totally different definition that they're working with and i mean from the core not even we're like a semantic linguistic definition they don't believe that it is a, a matter of language they believe it is a matter of divine right for the most I'm part not talk- i'm not talking to people who are religious. I'm talking to secular people, people who are not using religion as the basis of their discussions. I'm talking to people who are radical feminists who who reject the uh, the concept that we're talking about here of claiming that gender and sex are entirely disconnected. And the reason that I'm mentioning this is because it's very, very difficult for us to talk about this when we're talking to somebody who fundamentally disagrees with the concept of them being separated. I, I So I would love to talk about that sometime, I'm not 100% sure whether this is the right time to talk about it, right? Because somebody pointed out, like, this would be a, you know, this is a semantic argument and it would take a very long time to go through, right? 
I agree with that. It would. I don't think it's, it's a matter very hard. of a semantic argument, though. I, okay, I disagree I do. with you. But sure, okay. I mean, I, I, I just I just think you're tying this as an example. You've used this repeatedly as an example of why the right and the left are somehow equivalent. And, and I just don't think it's a good example. And I'm challenging that. So, okay. yeah. Well, yeah, because the left will propose things like, you know, we ought to do certain things in order to improve the lives of people in society. And then they'll use facts and study and data to back up, like, you know, uh, here's this is definitely a problem. We can see it's a problem in the data. Uh, this is obviously a way that it would be solved. We can see that because of other trials or whatever, right? Like, generally, that's what we do. Whereas, like, your example is like, well, some people think woman means a different thing than you do. Like, and, and that's not inject, uh, that's not like based in fact. That's just like, like I said, it's a semantic argument. Let's so, there is a significant difference between these two kind of sides. Let's go to um, uh, Red, um, and then uh, I had, what else I had? Uh, Red, uh, Johnny, then Jack, yeah. So this whole thing, again, with the like the equivalence is like, yes, there are things, the whole like nugget of truth thing, this exists for some things, right? Not many, but some things, but I don't think like the gender sex thing is one of them. Yeah. This is like the whole equivalence is like, just bullshit. both sides make the same arguments against each other. The difference is that one is sound, and one is not sound, right? So like just because an action is the same doesn't mean that the actions are equivalent. Like <laughs> I don't I don't like know like where this conversation is even heading because like I welcome it. Bring me any, any argument like in the past like how many years has like LGBT discourse been like in the mainstream like 30 years now? Um like every single thing is based on nothing. And the nu nuggets of truth, right? are either lies or they are don't represent their claim of like their normative claim about the thing that's happening for example there are trans women who are predators there are trans women who do rape little girls but right even though you can find news stories of that happening republicans will say look this is my nugget of truth right it's happening it's real you can't deny it yeah i can't deny that some trans people are horrible and awful right but what they will do is they'll take that nugget of truth, right, and stretch it beyond imagination and say, the reason they raped that person or assaulted that person is because they are trans, therefore trans problem. Uh, like, the nuggets of truth are less nuggets of truth and just anecdotes stretched beyond belief. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so Jack and uh, uh, Johnny, then Jack, please. Okay. So I I appreciate that nugget of truth description. Um, I I would go. I I just okay. I'm gonna address the actual question because I don't know where to go with the rest of this right now. So the question is: Can you be gender critical and also be a queer person, a trans person, uh, someone who is generally? Yeah, I assume that's the question, and that's incredibly incredibly difficult to answer but i think that the answer is is fundamentally no and the reason that i know that is because i know that the reason that cis women think that i'm trans masculine is because they think that i'm just trying to run away from the responsibilities of being a woman they think Long that i lost I've, lesbian sister or whatever the, the lost fucker. lesbian fucking sister it makes me sick and this the fact that the fact that I am, again, like, it, this goes back to what Demon Mama was saying and, and what I think Red Charlotte uh, displayed beautifully is that we are being told, we are being prescribed what we are and who we are while we are experiencing something completely different. Whereas the right's ideology, when we say that the right is based on feelings and things that are not tangible, we are talking about something that someone has never, ever experienced that I have certainly never experienced, which is a monotheistic cis normative world wherein everybody's going to hell if they stick a dick in a butt. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> you gotta true. laugh sometimes, my dear. You have a way of words, Johnny. <laughs> Thank <ahead>. you. <laughs> Any, anything else? No, that's just like we we are fundamentally experiencing. We are experiencing being trans, being non-binary, and this is antithetical 
to the idea that gender essentialism can exist, that people will always rightfully ha- or or you know sub- objectively have positive feelings and and qualities that I go challenge with this person the bodies they are born in. It is it is simply not true. It has never been true. Queer people have always existed. And the fact that we are being pushed out of the conversation and pushed into the realm of degeneracy is just, you know, because of religious fiction. I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. Um, uh, um, Jack, sorry. I'm After the pen. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, thanks. Um, like, I, I agree that, like, gender critical people are always going to be like, well, see, we, we have some evidence here that indicates that gender and sex are different things. But the reality, and, and this kind of comes back to what uh, Charlotte was talking about earlier, is that it's not equivalent on either side. Like, the scientific consensus is that trans people are a real thing that need to be addressed. And, like, hey, guess what? We We're all exist all here one. on this panel. Wow. Um, and like, you can see that even like the, the world health organization, like they, they're like, Hey, uh, sex and gender, two different things. Also, we know from like, just like experiences, personal experiences growing up and also experiences that we can, you know, quantify in scientific studies that the outcomes for trans youth are infinitely better if they get treated as their gender identity. Um, and so I love debates. I, I miss them. I, I struggle with the idea that like gender we, we need to contend with like this nugget of truth at the heart of like gender critical arguments because I, I don't think it's there. Like we the best science we have available to us, the overwhelming majority of it, that we should be addressing trans people as their gender um, and that gender and sex aren't the same thing. And the idea that like yeah i think that some trans people can be gender critical i don't think that that is uh, i i don't think that like trans people are immune from like drawing arbitrary lines between who is and is not valid um i think blair white ha- does this i think that there are a lot of trans medicalists who do this like oh you haven't had bottom surgery well then honey you're just a man like something like that you know like i i'm sure a lot of us have encountered something along those lines and i i don't I don't have patience for it, but those people exist out there. And I don't think that their arguments have merit because of like some semantic uh, gobbledygook at the bottom of like the, the logic totem pole. Uh, the reality is that we have to contend with what is real and in front of us. And when the when doctors are telling you the best outcome for trans kids is to treat them as the their gender identity and that the world's leading health organizations come down on like, yeah, you get better outcomes when you treat but not sex online and gender as different why, things. Beast. I think that anyone who disagrees with that is fundamentally disagreeing with reality. Uh, but you've got to understand all these clinics and doctors and people who say this stuff, they're all in the pocket of uh, big pharma. They oh, make yeah, a lot of money from transing all these children. <laughs> it's and, true i forgot about the global uh, homo i forgot about yeah that. yeah and the yeah. international jewish puppet masters of course like yeah, using course. it to try yeah. and undermine western society yeah i think like I, there's a lot of discussion like among Listen, um, I love Viv. like trans activists and I love researchers Viv. and anti-fascists and all sorts um about whether or not to call the gender critical movement a cult i think it has a lot of very very cult-like qualities um and it's not least not least that shit that I was just saying. <laughs> Samantha, then Red, um, and then do you want to your hand up? All right. Okay, so I believe that you can be and and should be, like I'm going to touch on a few topics right now. Um, trans medicalism doesn't necessarily mean you have to have bottom surgery. Um, right. and, and I'm about to, yeah. I'm going to come back to gender critical because this is all going to fucking line up. Okay. Trans medicalism doesn't mean like you're not valid if you don't have bottom surgery, but trans medicalism should be promoted in the fact that like we shouldn't be letting people go and just medicate themselves, buy stuff off the internet from Thailand. Like I started out and doing it unsafely, having an endocrinologist, having uh, mental health care. Yes. Is great and beneficial to people that are going through this. Um, so like just shitting on trans medicalism as a whole is fucking stupid. Um, can, I, can I clarify just what I meant by that? Please. 
So the only thing I, I meant by like oh. trans medicalist are the people who draw arbitrary lines about like, well, you're not a real I trans person blood, unless everyone. you have bottom surgery or you're not a real trans true person scum. unless, yeah, true scum. Okay. Um, and I, I, I do not think that that is valid at all, but I do think that all trans people should have access to safe um, like medicine and treatment. And like, I obviously agree with you on that. So just just trying to make sure that it's not taken in blue yeah yeah like i i just think people i, I, I think the whole trans medicalism bad thing is bad for people because you're including the mental health care that goes along with it endocrinologist to watch the blood work to see even <laughs> like doing your your med doses I, right i don't uh, think that's what anybody means when they say trans medicalist trans medicalism mm -hmm. is like cool i'm just clear. yeah saying you're not trans, trans like you don't have like a, a don't like have a diagnosis of gender dysphoria or whatever it's true yeah. scum it's synonymous true, 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 true scum mean, i don't think it's trans trans yeah like nobody yeah. think nobody thinks that like tr uh trans people shouldn't get medical care or shouldn't have like some kind of psychological care probably um but there are significant problems with like the psychological care and so on as we're seeing right now in the United Kingdom, where they're striking down conversion therapy bill after conversion therapy bill uh, in order that they can continue to send trans uh, kids to conversion therapy. I think therapy. so, but it's okay. Um, I mean, my, there's a I'm tremendous amount of gatekeeping in the medical system over here as well. I'm reclaiming um, my time. Yeah. Sorry? Okay. I said, I'm reclaiming my time. And I think it's actually beneficial for trans people to be um, fucking gender critical. And if, I don't care if you want to say gatekeepy. I don't give a shit. Um, I, I want trans people not to be delegitimized by other groups of people, like say the right or the GOP or whatever. I don't want them to have any fucking excuses with people running around saying, I'm a cat gender. I'm this fucking gender. I, I'm this oh, fucking kin. Boy. I'm this fucking kin. You know, the Tumblr days of what the fuckness. Um, I think it helps that that kind of bullshit really? legitimizes our struggle and what we're going through. Um, so, Wrong. Like, yeah, fuck it. I, I I think there is a time and place to be gender critical as a trans person because I don't want to be delegitimized and and what I'm trying to do and go through. Okay, so uh, are you saying gender critical really quick? Are you saying gender critical as in something different from gender essentialist? Because most people use them synonymously. I'm just making sure you use them differently. The, the big brain word for me. Remember, okay, tra gender gender critical is usually like critical. I, I understand that like the overall term is gender critical of certain genders and to be a little gatekeepy, which I kind of agree with you to socially be like no gender it, critical it, is just a synonym for turf. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. So gender essentialism. Gender essentialism is generally the accepted word for turfs and true scum. And, and shit like that. It's it's gender, it's essential, as in you are born with something and you are nothing else and there's no room I, for fluidity. I gotta get in here. Kind oh, of no, bullshit. That's... Gender essentialism, you are either a man or a woman and that is that. Yep, Even if you're true. trans, like you have to be dysphoric and trans. You have to be binary, basically. No, but like, essentialism is like, I, I, I don't know if you guys know what essentialism is, right? Like, it's not just a thing that has to do with gender. It's this idea that things have essence to them, right? That there is, like, uh, a truth to the thing, like, a, 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 a sort of soul, like, in a in a sort of abstract sense. Like, gender exists Red Charlotte. I like uh, Red separate Charlotte. from what you perceive it to be, right? It's not a social construct, blah, 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 blah. And so, like, I have, like, a bunch of stuff to say because it's been, like, a little bit. Um, so, one, true scum transmedicalist. These are synonyms. One became a thing on Tumblr as a disparaging term for transmedicalism, and transmedicalism was used over true scum as a way to seem more legitimate. Uh, gender critical uh, theory, feminism, is literally the like non-disparaging word for being a TERF. Um, and, uh, oh god, there's so much. Um, Take your earlier, time. I wanted to go back to what like Alice was saying like a little bit ago, because we sort of got away from that. The, this idea of needing to understand where right-wingers come from Right. And like how we how that is necessary, like a component in order to actually like make people, you know, not transphobic. Right. Um, I posted some stuff in chat uh, and it, it, we don't have to placate to like nonsense, disinformation. We don't have to lie. Uh, if you like do canvassing with trans people, you present facts continuously, blah, 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 blah. People eventually will come onto your side. This is just like. We, we're calling it a culture war, right? But it's sort of like a mopping, right? The left, the liberal side, right, currently is 
mopping conservatives in the culture war, I think like eighty percent of Americans God, I love want trans rights, as in legal protections for trans people. It gets like a little bit more split in the nitty gritty of like, do you believe there are three genders? Blah 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 blah. Like the really like niche stuff, right? But when it comes to like actually trans people not being like uh, uh, assaulted, uh, killed. Uh, uh, all of these different things like discriminated against most people by and large even conservatives are against that because it like it, it, it's distasteful right they don't like the idea of hurting people right most people don't right um and also to like we don't have to placate to people who are like um if you type uh, it with capital, against like yeah. neo pronouns against like third genders or whatever to like seem legitimate because like it's not bullshit and like i would contend that saying that is one eurocentric and like explicitly racist um because like two spirit or whatever right these kinds of things the the um fuck what are they called in india i forgot um but like these aren't like they're not they're not just binary trans people because that's a eurocentric view of what gender is these are third fourth fifth and sometimes even to some jewish people there are six like categories of gender right um and just like oh cat gender blah 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 blah. these are just like um like th- they just sound ridiculous because they have like a like fun little cutesy name on them but it's no different from like using they them using blah 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 because i don't know if anyone knows mm. before they them became popular neo pronouns zzer was like for most non-binary people, what they used. They used no. to be more popular than That's, they them. That is not true. They used to be more infamous, but I can count on one hand the number of people that have that I have heard who use neo-pronouns or who at any point have accepted neo-pronouns. The vast know, majority about, of people... Like, it, neo-pronouns about 12 are, years ago, when I first I'm, came out as genderqueer, we were having that discussion, and there were a ton of different people, lot of people. who were, like, doing but, sims as uh, they sims. Uh, but, but also... Okay. Who, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, 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 okay, can I clarify really quick? Really quick. I'm not attacking neo-pronouns. I accept that changing the language needs to happen. I am taking a stance, and I am saying that it needs to happen gradually and that we are closer to they them acceptance than we are to Zezer acceptance i'm just stating that as what i believe to be sure, but, but, that, but that's why but that's why they them, let, let, red, hold on, hey, hey, let, let red finish please but that's why they them won out in the end for most non-binary people is because they said in like back in the day like this is before tumblr i'm not even talking about tumblr i'm talking about back in the day okay like 20 years ago, people were having this conversation before the internet. Um, like, this is why they, them won out. It's because they didn't, most people didn't want to have the trouble because like, people that use they, them, non binary, is an umbrella, right? Being non binary isn't the third gender, right? It's an umbrella term for anyone that isn't a binary man or a woman, right? It's, it is by definition infinite, right? But people understood that linguistically, this is going to make their lives shit, right? They would rather just go by they, them, and this is what most people culturally became comfortable with. Uh, that's just what happened. Like, this is just like history. So, or so let's go to um, um, uh, uh, Demon and then Alice. And then uh, oh, we're going to go to Jack, but her internet won't. Now she'll be back. <laughs> okay. So Demon then Alice, please. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot I, I would like to address here. First of all, I it did, it did sound to me like there was some conflating of terms going on. Uh, I am going, you know, my. The way I'm approaching this is with gender critical being the movement, not like the two words being put together like you are critical of the concept of gender. Because if that was the case, I think every trans person would be gender critical, quote unquote, because you're critical of gender. Um, I think that's what I mean. Yeah, but the gender critical movement is um, can somebody be trans and be gender critical? Yeah, people can do all kinds of stupid shit. Why would you do that to yourself? And I'm sure there are plenty. There are. Uh, I mean... I've spent uh, plenty of time on the gender critical forums as well. And I can tell you there sure are a lot of people um, who I would come away with the conclusion that they are deeply uh, self-harming themselves and really just want to transition but don't feel like they can. Um, 99% of people who identify as transsexual. Like, well, that's not wrong, right? Most people who do that are, I would say, gender critical trans people or whatever. Um, And I think also that, like, the term transmedicalist – Transmedicalism is specifically um, a term that's used not to discuss like medical issues 
for trans people, but rather a a theory of transness that is based off of um uh that is based off of your medical status. And I have a huge problem with trans medicalism. In fact, I stand firmly against it. I uh, if if we had if trans medicalism had been the way uh, for, well, I mean, it was the way, um, and it resulted in uh, the Blanchard era, an era in which trans people were um, categorized into true trans and autogynophiles. Um, and these terms were used to make, uh, to build the the current discourse that we have now but around the perverted trans people versus the good trans people i think this is like trans medicalism is a flawed way of understanding transness i don't think that um doctors who are going to inevitably forever be predominantly cis should have the final say on who is and who isn't trans i don't think that's a working or healthy or ethical way of conversing about these things i think we should discourage it mm -hmm. um and yeah, with regard to the um, the the question that um, has been brought up here, yeah, do I think trans people? Sure, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You can be all kinds of stupid things. You can have all kinds of um, like contradictory viewpoints. People do it all the time. Um, that doesn't mean that it's right or good. Um, and also, probably not good for you either. It's probably a horrible experience to be trans and gender critical. Also, I just want to say um, I really don't think that it's necessary to uh, dis disparage attack put down or whatever any other um people who are challenging traditional understandings of anything that includes like neo pronouns uh that includes gender abolitionism that includes even other kin that includes uh plural folks i don't think that we should out of hand dismiss people like that as um like inherently absurd i think that these things should be attempted to be understood and should not be used as a like a defensive othering to try and make trans people seem more convincing the most convincing thing will always be the truth and guess what there's all kinds of great ways to deliver the truth that doesn't involve um like attacking another group or 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 like i don't know trying to make another group to sound bad uh, to me uh when somebody when somebody walks into a conversation um, about gender and tries to bring up like hey transracialism or haha attack helicopter or what about what about the turtle t the turtle uh the turtle weeb on tumblr who thinks that she's a J japanese turtle that likes listening to anime music it's like okay was well, that other what did they call that other kin i don't know like don't know. Well, who fucking cares what does it have to do with what we're talking about it's it's such a uh, it's a, <laughs> it's a distracting whataboutism that's only designed to try and like make somebody like make like not only straw man the claims of a group because i doubt anybody here has actually like seriously looked into other kin i know i haven't um so what do you even know about uh -huh. it you're just choosing them as like hey whatever i'm going to use these people as a bad example um you just no, don't i'm to... using it as the as the the right, right and a lot of people in groups that were um against trans people use yeah, that because as an they're example. fucking stupid that's and why don't be you, you don't you, they, you, people so. going around doing this delegitimizes us no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't delegitimize you. No one is delegitimized. No one is. I do want to get to Alice. I don't want to get too far down. Well, okay, but I'd like to finish. Can I finish my point? Is that fine? Please, please, please. Okay, yeah. Look, like I, I just don't think that like you're you're playing their game if you think that them like snarkily bringing up some slight like unrelated thing that's like on the surface um is like i mean it's no different than people being like oh well you'd fuck a butt what what, what stops you from fucking a horse lamau like that's the same thing it's like these are two completely unrelated topics you just know the you've identified the word fuck is in both sentences and so you're trying to do this like baby brained uh bad faith comparison i don't think it's necessary to engage with that sort of shit i don't it doesn't delegitimize anything the i the fact that like i believe very strongly that trans people should have agency that informed consent is the best way to go forward with people getting the medical help that they need because guess what as it turns out people can make informed medical decisions about hormones and surgery so we don't need to kowtow to trans medicalism we don't need to kowtow to the rights bad faith attack helicopter jokes none of those are legitimate argument tactics and we can easily dismiss uh, them okay so alice has been waiting uh, quite patiently and then we can go back to uh, johnny been doing my best 
Um, yeah. So uh, there's like so much shit that is like I can't address all sorts of stuff. So yeah, uh, uh, let's start coming. from the beginning. So first off, I'm a gender abolitionist. Um, I, just to be super clear, sure, um, yeah. I am directly uh, advocating for the abolition of gender as a in, entirely as a system. That doesn't mean like go ahead and call people like their sex. It means you know entirely do away with the things that we associate to gender, like the association of uh, men, you know, wearing some types of clothing and women wearing other types of clothing, or men being more commonly in some jobs and when being in other jobs, etc. Entire abolition of that concept. Um, so I, I agree with a lot of people here that, yeah, it's a social co construct, but I think it's a social, social construct that, that gets layered on top of sex. And I don't think that we're doing a very good job of actually demolishing it, first off. Second off, uh, transmedicalism. Transmedicalism is just the core belief that you have to have dysphoria to be trans. It doesn't have any other tenets. Just you have to have dysphoria to be trans. That's transmedicalism. There's different views in transmedicalism. Some people who are transmedicalists um... think you also have to be being treated. Um, but uh, the core belief is just the uh, gender dysphoria. Uh, gender critical. So uh, to claim that gender critical and TERF are the same is not true. Uh, TERFs are honestly almost better than gender critical people because gender critical most of the time is just a dog whistle for I hate trans people. Not good. Um, there are some These people have who no are what actually about. okay with trans people. Um, they uh. are always going to be harmful. They're never going to be good. Uh, being a TERF is never going to be a good thing. You cannot be a trans person and a TERF. Can't do it. Um, it means trans exclusionary radical feminist and it's just people who are radical feminists that think that uh, trans women uh, don't belong in their movement. Um, that is the basis of it. And yes, it's always harmful to trans people, um, trans women specifically. Uh, gender critical is a much, much more simple uh, concept. Uh, and it's either used in the gender critical subreddit, um, which is where it's like been most commonly used, gender critical subreddit and the sphere around it now that has been kicked off of Reddit. Viv's it's been used it. as the concept of uh, essentially just being critical of the concept of gender. Um, but what that actually ends up being is a dog whistle for just hating trans people. There are some people like myself who might take on gender critical as, as a word um, because of the, uh, the, the connotation. I am a gender abolitionist and I am critical of the concept, the social concept of gender. So I might be able to say that, uh, right? Um, and I would love to get into why I have such problems with the concept of gender. Um, but I think I need a longer panel to do that. And I would love to talk about that, but I just don't think we're going to have time. Hey, on guess this what? Panel. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to take this opportunity. I'm throwing down the gauntlet. You want to talk after this? You should come on my show because mm -hmm. I have a lot of shit I want to talk about with you. We can... Gender, gender critical is literally just a rebrand of TERF, right? Like when I, I, fucking... I put it in chat, yeah. When like... started, like people were calling them TERFs and they kind of embraced it. Um, and and then they decided TERF was a slur because it like it took on a lot of negative connotations. Really and now they all call themselves gender critical. Now, do people who are not part of the core fucking TERF, turf movement also call themselves gender critical? Yeah, they do because they have some of the same fucking um, ideological motives and shit. Um, but but that doesn't mean that like gender critical is like a completely different thing from TERF. It just isn't. It's getting spicy. And I I. I really just like it's kind of it's borderline fucking irresponsible to be it like is different. Okay. Hold, on, uh, hold on hold on hold on this is semantic so, all of this is semantic we are i i am sorry almost that i asked semantic, for the clarification so. for like i i okay. she's identifying two distinct groups that don't exist it's not a semantic thing okay all right we're we're trying to say like one thing is the same word for another thing like i i find that to be semantic but what i wanted to address was what demon mama was saying in oh, relation to oh sorry no 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 problem, no problem um uh so uh, a good friend uh joe of the city series also wants to join in on this conversation and she's like super hyped about this um so uh alice and demon mama if you want to continue up this conversation after this panel the specific conversation you're talking about i would love it all right let's let's knock this out all right okay so go ahead please you uh, got it John. bonus content okay. everybody okay. so i accept that people are not invalid their experience is not invalid of feeling like a cat sometimes or thinking that in a past life they were a dolphin i accept that star gender cool in a past life you are big bright burning star that's fine i i'm not saying that you're invalid but what and and i know samantha that you would probably say that these people are just completely they're, invalid. They're not valid. but they're not, valid. they're not star gender is not a fucking valid gender but, fight me Hold on one second, one second, one second, because I'm going to steal man you too. I'm just stealing man and both of you at the same time and realize it. Yeah. So what Demon Mama is saying is that these people have 
a place to fight for their ability to be star gender on their license plate or whatever. Right, on Tumblr, but, away from society. But, but, okay, there are places and times and uses for words and for groups. We are people who are transgender. And when we speak on these terms, we are speaking about being transitional in the concept of gender whether it be and a lot of people will say it's a social construct well that doesn't mean that it's not important and that doesn't mean that it doesn't have uses so when you talk about someone who is other kin or who is star gender or what the fuck ever they are not invalid but they are not the same group we are working in a concept of gender and i want us to remember that okay so i i really don't want us to fall too far down the rabbit hole of fighting over who else in other groups is valid because that's not really our place just like if somebody was to be transracial i would let the people of their supposed preferred race decide whether or not that's accepted you know so if people want to and i think what samantha is trying to say Okay, I think what Samantha is trying to say is that we are not going to be benefited by fighting not only for transgender people to have basic like things that we need, like medical care and the ability to identify legally as ourselves, but also that, okay, so we, we need to have those abilities, but we can't feasibly in my opinion and i'm a pretty pragmatic person so if i'm if i'm getting out of the realm of what you think is a possibility let me know but it, i think it's infeasible to fight for star gender at on the license at the same time do you see what I, I'm I don't saying? i don't care about star gender and also i want to address something that that samantha said which was then after that we'll go to red please. sure sure um I just I, I think the idea of like, yeah, just on Tumblr away from society like that is what people literally say about trans people. That's what they say about gay people. They say this about everybody. They say this about black people. Oh, I man. mean, think about what? Uh, black like we are all like people like no literally literally wait how hold on a second no just just like gender. how can you as a human being make yourself a fucking star gender cat gender you are literally how, doing how, the how, thing how, you are doing the on. thing that the right wingers want you to do you are falling for their idiotic bait we had we lived in a society in which we literally had segregated water fountains are you fucking kidding me like, you do not have to play to these idiotic arguments when they try and pitch you a South Park tier. Oh, trans people, well, what's next? Trans dolphin? They're not even the fucking same concept. They're using a, a, a an, exactly. aesthetic, a, an aesthetic surface appearance to make you, like, try and play nice to them when they don't fucking care about you. They don't care about you. They don't care about trans people. They don't care about star people. They want to make you try and look ridiculous. And guess what? You don't have to play that game. And you also, but you, but you also, you also don't have to try and turn uh, around and 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 like ally with them and saying oh that this person is is stupid or whatever like i don't even think i bet like again i don't fucking care about star gender whatever bullshit you're gonna make up right now i'm glad you i'm glad you were able to cart out the right winger's favorite the old attack helicopter that's a cool one um but yeah i mean we all know the reason why the attack helicopter thing is so stupid is because it's ridiculous on his face you're comparing a social construct that is that is highly highly malleable like gender which has been discussed for decades to a defined single object a helicopter which we are able to define by certain traits we don't use these types these are not the same types of linguistic structures and it's it's silly and also shows a lack of understanding of what's actually being discussed to try and play equivalence between wh whether between being trans and being attack helicopter this is just silliness and also like i don't know this this there's this whole there's so much going on in here that that I, I don't even know how to address, but I did I did want to address on that. I think it's very silly, and I also think it's it's um deeply ironic that your response to even somebody that you seem you seem to think is ridiculous is to do the exact same thing that people said for trans people to do and are to this day and would do if they had their way. Like, do you not realize that that mentality is uh you know kind of ridiculous? That like do you not realize that a lot of those things are 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 hurtful and and set no, the trans. 
You are just sensitive. You are being a snowflake. You are offended by somebody. No, no, I don't really care. I don't really. If you're going to put out right wing talking points, I'm reclaiming my time. Reclaiming my time. There we go. Okay, so like, check this out. Like, we are trying to get like just basic fucking trans rights set up. Yeah. Okay, like, what are they gonna fucking like? They're not gonna fucking be like, oh yeah, well, this person who who wants to fucking have the aesthetic of a goddamn cat. Yeah, let's put that on their fucking drivers. It's it's hurting the fucking current movement. Okay, no, Trans it isn't. People, some, random, people, some random, some random. Listen, listen. listen. Uh, 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 no, 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 no. Uh, red. I'm I'm red I'm revoking the pog. Practice, I'm revoking but... the pog. Okay, so that was a lot. So um. <laughs> okay, so one first thing. Uh, there is no sizable movement of even within trans communities to get neo pronouns currently people want to do it in the future but there's no movement there's no advocacy groups that are pushing for neo pronouns on Who cares, like even if there driver's was? licenses so i don't know where you got that one uh people want like the x right as an umbrella term for like not man not woman right it's the we umbrella we were talking about neo pronouns we were talking about like, people who use gender in a way that it is not that's because you don't understand those people and you're straw manning their entire existence Right. So, Bro, like, no, I'm when not. People, when people say, yeah, okay, first of all, I was on Tumblr, like, all of those years, right, where people were bullying other kins, right? When someone says Same. they're star gender, they don't literally mean that they're a fucking star, right? That's not what that means. Pronouns, right? are separate from gender. They are a form of gender expression, right? When people say they are fae or fae self, they're not literally saying that they are a fae, right? Unless they're like a Wicca or something. That's completely different. But like normally, they don't actually believe that they're a fae. It's literally an aesthetic. It's an aesthetic choice because they like how that pronoun sounds and they like how it makes them feel. They don't literally think they are that I just want to point thing. out that I was 100% right, nya nya the self, They don't literally think that they are a cat. Right, they are a like uh, most other kin people are not like unironically think they are those things or like trans species or trans whatever. Those people just have like a different neo pronoun that they think looks nicer or makes them feel better. It I, literally, I, I there's no there's out. no material difference between Zer and Fay and Fay self. The only distinction is in your head because you have this idea that you think it's holding back the movement. Where one, you will not be able to provide literally any substantiation for that because one, neo pronouns aren't even in the mainstream. Not even fucking Republicans in the mainstream talk about neo pronouns. Nobody has fucking said the word other can on fucking cable news. None of these things are happening. And trans people are winning the fucking culture war. It's not happening. Like, you don't have to placate to fucking bigots who bully 14-year-olds because they like how a certain pronoun sounds in order to win your fucking rights. It, it's literally the, I'm the good one, they're the bad trans. It's completely unnecessary, and you will have, like, no empirical basis for, like, holding this position. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I, and, and I just want to point out that this is exactly why these sort of talking points are are, are, are churned out. They're, they are done to... Uh, waste everyone's time over things that actually really aren't even that big of a thing. And you probably, if you actually took the time to sit down and talk about it, you could probably find that there's some level of truth or or value in some of the things that are being said. Like, for example, how do you know that somebody, I mean, I don't even know. I could come up with a hundred examples. People, people have all kinds of reasons for why they um, flaunt and fight against systems or resist them or whatever. And some people have really, like, really dumb reasons. But the idea that some random kid on Tumblr who has a, like, a, a questionable understanding of gender or whatever, or thinks they're a star, like, is a danger is ridiculous. It's the same. It's no different. That sort of, like, uh, oh, I need to, like, I need to bring these people up and like use them as a bludgeon to try and win favor from right wingers is the same mentality that leads people like Fox News to fixate on like Mr. Potato Head changing the packaging to being Potato Head instead of Mr. Potato Head. It's it's turn it's trying to make something into an issue for no reason, and it only seeds okay. ground to far right people. I really do. I I'm, I really am gonna push back on this because I like it, there. When I said I don't know very many people who use neo pronouns a charlotte i think you thought that i was attacking those people and b uh i i know a samantha, ton more samantha. people yeah b, I'm mainly talking to samantha hmm? no i was I talking to yeah. charlotte, when charlotte i, I was, was talking about samantha oh you were talking about samantha okay well yeah. anyway so anyway <laughs> the fucking i apologize i didn't mean to be defensive on that so when when you say other kin 
and shit like that and you literally say i think i am a cat like that's the kind of shit who that Samantha fucking is cares? talking about. This is really? Mr. Potato Head okay, shit. Okay, okay, listen. I'm talking. A majority of a majority of Americans have talked about this fucking lot. So please let me talk for like two minutes, okay? Yeah. Uninterrupted, if you don't I mean, mind. Please. Yeah. All right. So I am going to reference Rachel Dolezal and her weird shit about being transracial because this is the actual real shit that we are talking about as a community and i accept demon oh, mama that you don't want to like we're a lot of people are having it's this like... conversation in the trans community and if you think they're not maybe you haven't seen it just like i didn't see people accepting no, zero pronouns we're, okay? we're taking we a all have time portal back no, to no, 2014 no, 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 no. hey we gotta we gotta let her finish please no, let them i apologize let them finish john jesus christ okay so all I'm trying to say is that they're not the same thing. I'm literally trying to steal Manny Demon Mama and you let me talk. We are not talking about the same thing when we talk about somebody being a, when we talk about transgender, we are talking about the social construct of gender and we are talking about transitioning in, out of, outside of, in between the concept of gender. And I would really, really like for us to get back to gender because I agree with you that attacking other groups doesn't help us. It doesn't, it like even accepting that they exist is just fine. Like just say it, move on. It's not a big ass deal because like you said, there's not a lot of people like that anyway. Most of them are kids who probably do just have a really weird understanding of being trans. And we are kind of just falling into these right wing talking points. But then you have people like Rachel Dolezal who try to say that they are equivalent to, and you have people like Redneck. I saw some dude named Redneck who used to come on with a Q at the end, like a fucking weirdo. He used to come on panels and he used to say that he is a black person or what the fuck ever, that he is transracial. And he is the example that I'm trying to talk about. That is the kind of shit that we have to contend with in order to do something like win the culture war. And so I agree with you, Demon Mama. Hold on, I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. I agree with Demon Mama when I say that they are two completely separate conversations and the the shutdown is not those people are not valid. The shutdown is that's not gender. That's not what we're talking about when we talk about transgender issues. I mean, okay? that's what I I'm said. Sorry. Yeah, that's what I said. Yes, that's what, I that's was what agreeing I with you the well, whole okay. time. Well, okay, it didn't, for a, at a number of points, it did not sound like you were agreeing with me, just for the record. So I don't know. Maybe there was a miscommunication on there. But most of my points were not made against you. They were made against Samantha's position of saying those people should just exist in the, in the, in the Tumblr sphere where we can forget about them or whatever however um i i acknowledge to a certain degree what you're talking about but at the same time i do feel like the with the rachel dolezal thing like this this is the rachel dolezal thing is a perfect example of what i'm talking about it's about some random dramatic like g g granular one-off event in which it's arguable whether any harm was actually even done and who knows but the right-wingers air puffed the shit out of that thing and have turned it into a talking point for years and we've had to hear about this stupid random person who did one random thing because she said it, it, it's like if you even look into the details it's like okay so maybe she had some connection who fucking cares and it, it, it reminds the reason why i get so frustrated with this is because we keep having to encounter these like trans racialist arguments and by the way just so you know for redneck i literally debated redneck one-on-one -on -one, and he used that argument against me and it was easy it's easy to deal with that you go what the fuck are you talking about dude we're talking about gender not race and if you really want to get into it there's actually an interesting conversation to be had about race because race is also a severely flawed social concept so you could talk about that but they will never do that because it's not a good faith engagement nor is bringing so up star gender or other kin or any of this it's not a good faith attempt it's just a, a throwaway line to try and make somebody else sound bad. So I want Samantha to be able to. Uh, so uh, I want Samantha to be able to respond. Then Vivian, because you've been trying to get in for a while. So Samantha, Vivian, then Jack. Okay. So it's like I'm, I'm not saying that like people aren't valid, right? But I'm saying that like um, giving these people ammunition to use against us, like at least like trans people, non-binary, based off stuff in the human structures. When you start trying to pull like random shit, like fucking dolphins, stars, I don't give a fuck. Like it hurts. Like it, it hurts it. It makes us look like a fucking joke. 
Shake your head all you fucking want. I don't give a shit. Um, You're just um, being a snowflake is all. Really? Your chat's the one telling me that they want to throw toasters in my bath. Get the fuck out of uh, here. Nobody said that. Um, uh, bullshit. Um, so nobody you, said you that. Got, like, it's shooting... Please, please, Shut please, 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 please. You know, it turns this into a joke. That's, the a, other that's people a hell of an allegation to make on a panel. That's a pretty weird shit to do. No, no, no. Yeah, no, I, it was here. I watched three chats. Um, get out of the chat and pay attention to the conversation. Your argument would be better. Oh, okay, all right, please, please. Let's just focus on the, on the actual topic. Go ahead. So it, it turns it into a joke, okay? Like, I, I, I don't care if they want to have some aesthetic, right? But, like, you people want to be like, oh, well, who cares? It's not doing anything. Like, yeah, the jet, like, how, what utility does this have to get the general population of the United States to be more accepting of trans people? It has no fucking utility. It looks, oh, well, trans people, now we're going to have to make fucking room for cat people. Now we're going to have to make room for this fucker. Now we're going to have to, like, where does it Oh, uh, now end? we got to make room for gay people. Now we got to make room for trans people. Oh my god, wasn't trans enough? Now non-binary. Oh my god, black people? Oh god. It's the same shit. You're mimicking their arguments. You are the one who's giving them the fuel. Are, not are, the other are you people. sitting here saying cat gender is valid? No, I'm saying you're not yeah. doing any favors. So and guess what? Gender, and maybe is it is. Maybe it is. How yeah. do you know? Yeah. Have you ever yeah. even actually done any, any fucking <laughs> look into it? Like, who fucking cares? It's not related to anything that we're talking about. You're just who making cares? up. I care. I care because conservatives use that as fucking ammunition no, against my fucking, fucking rights. Don't. It's not ammunition. That's like, that's like, that's like if somebody throws a banana peel at you and you're like, oh my God, you just nuked me with this banana peel. It's like, it's a useless argument that they use to distract and waste everyone's time. It's not good faith. It's not. So, um... And, and, and like uh, using it as a bludgeon, again, to just try and out of hand invalidate everyone and call them dumb fucks or whatever that you probably haven't even actually looked into, which I'm, I'm just call, I'm just making a, I'm just making a little gut check on that one that most people probably actually haven't looked into any of these things. Um, then, you know, uh, I just think that's kind of shitty. And I think it also, it, like the idea that like you need to try and demonize some random anonymous children on, t on Tumblr in order to, to win over some favor that they're never going to give you anyway is ridiculous. And you give credence to their points by treating them like they're a serious point. There is no serious point to be made in you comparing to their points by letting them fucking have this ammunition to use against no, us. No, I don't. I am Jesus immune to it. No, I have, I have the Chad position. They bounce off me like fucking yeah, rubber okay, bullets. Chad. Yeah, Bruh, because okay. guess what? I'm not scared of some random Tumblr teenager being like, oh, I'm a dolphin. And then what do you what do you think we should do? Do you think we should do you think we should base? Hold on a second. Hold on. No, no, I'm talking now. I'm on a roll. Now I'm on a roll. No, no. Uh, after this, I want to let Vivian, please. Okay, yeah. Well, just let me just say this: if if we were to if we were to use your standard for all of political discussions, then I guess we should be having a fucking giant uh, uh, internal community meltdown over a four year old who walks to the room and goes, "Mommy, I'm a dinosaur." Then you go, "Oh my god, what are you doing?" And in fact, oh wait, it's really funny because right wingers literally did that. They literally write comics about kids being, well, "I'm a tiger gender," and guess what? We it's bullshit standard, then, Rachel, and it's bullshit now. It's backwards. snowflakery. Okay, Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, Vivian, you're please. Use your fucking points, Vivian. then, like, Rachel Dolezal is a valid fucking black Ooh. human being. And fucking, you know what? Everybody Not else the same thing. You're Vivian, doing Vivian, the right-winging ar argument. No, that's that's fine. 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 We're going we're gonna to be back and forth. This guy's going to be back forever. I guarantee you. Can I say one thing real quick? <laughs> one very quick thing, because then Vivian is believing. I'm revoking yeah, like the pog second. from the beginning of this. Uh, to the chat, everyone in chat, uh, I'm going to, I'm gonna. this is my position right now. The only reason I don't respect Apache helicopter identities is because I know it's insincere. If someone was sincerely said that my pronouns were like uh, stinger slash stinger missile self, I would respect that. Okay. Why not? Enough. All right. Uh, let's go to For Vivian, the and then Jack, and then Johnny. This fucking hurts me. Like... A lot, actually. Like back in, um, back in, shit, it must have been 20, 2009, 2008, 2009, when I, when I was like really trying to fucking get to grips with the idea of like being genderqueer, which is what we called it at the time. Everybody says non binary now, but they're essentially just synonymous. Um, you know, there was a big discussion in the, um, trans community in general about like pronouns and all this sort of shit. Um, and, you know, I tried out Caesar for a little while. It wasn't a thing that, like, um, it, it didn't feel super right to me. So I just stuck with, like, she, her, they, them. I still have a lot of troubles with, like, trying to explain where I'm at, um, you know, in, in terms of gender. I know I fucking hate being referred to uh, in the masculine, in the masculine sense. 
but uh you know i could i could easily go for a zizer zazem whatever right um i just use i just use they them or she her because it's just fucking easier but like the people who are um experimenting with this and exploring this they're trying to communicate something right yeah they're trying to communicate yes, where they are on this gender spectrum and some of them are saying well you know gender essentially is just bullshit so i'm just like my pronouns are some are an aesthetic that i'm going to use and that's a perfectly uh valid position as well but a lot of them are trying to you know if you talk about uh you know demi gender or gray gender or uh all these sorts of things they're attempting to enunciate like whereabouts they kind of are on this gender spectrum and therefore like how society should treat them and i think it's just really fucking because a lot of the conversation so far um has been like oh these people don't fucking matter or like we shouldn't be talking about these people and that's absolutely not the fucking case in my opinion these people are um for the most part probably quite young people but there's a lot of older people that use uh, uh you know neo pronouns as well um but they are part of the trans community. They are part of the trans movement and they deserve the same fucking rights as everybody else. And if you're going to just say, well, these people look ridiculous to other people, I look fucking ridiculous to like most people, right? Like if I, like when I'm out on the fucking, uh, on the fucking street, like, I, I don't know, sometimes I pass, but sometimes I don't. And I don't really care too much about it because, you know, my gender expression is like somewhat fluid. And so I, it's going to be I'm a bloody just, night like, chat if your argument is they look ridiculous to people fuck samantha you probably look ridiculous to most fucking republicans so does probably most people on this fucking panel right you can't just be like oh well they look ridiculous to people therefore like we have to fucking uh demonize victimize bully them on behalf of the right which would be doing that anyway regardless Damn, of whether or not you're on board with them um it's it's just horrible and it hurts it makes me sad <laughs> <laughs> And for the record, uh, just in case there was any uh, m misunderstanding in my frustration and anger, uh, I don't think that, like, uh, to, to bounce off what Viv said, I don't think that, like, th these people shouldn't be, like, cared about at all. And I hope that didn't come across. I, I mean, I, do, I did literally say who cares, but I mean in terms of this conversation. I think there's actually some interesting conversations to be had about what gender is and how you fight against the concept of gender. Uh, and some people say mm. the, the best way to deal with gender is to make a joke of it. And that's yeah. okay. That's actually okay. Yeah. I think that's I like a valid fine. response sometimes. And I do agree I with you with like super, super strongly about the idea that like most people that, that, that get highlighted by the right, by the way, and, and, and made fun of on national television sometimes for being a cat person or whatever. These are people who are genuinely trying to figure themselves out. And maybe they're not right. Maybe oh. they're saying it awkwardly. But we should look at those people with sympathy and also with understanding that all of us, every single person on this panel was in and recent Tom, history, Tom, like Viv said, considered ridiculous. Every single one of us, every person on here. Yeah. And, Vivian and responded and then we'll go to Jack. So someone in chat just said like oh well they uh, most of them are like forty there are older people that use like neo pronouns and all that shit um, but like even if they are just fourteen fucking year olds on Tumblr they absolutely do matter they're part of the fucking they're part of the movement they're part of the they are the people that we're fighting to have like a better fucking life than one I did struggle. When I was one a, struggle one struggle I was a teenager right not they're they're the people that I want to be able to like have access to fucking puberty because and hormone treatment and the things that are currently being taken away in this in in my country right fucking now uh so they absolutely do fucking matter and we should be listening to them and we should be trying to understand them we shouldn't just be discarding them because there's something that society thinks is ridiculous because like i said every single fucking one of us on this panel would have I been viewed you, ridiculous by uh you know uh by the right probably Based are Viv. still reviewed uh viewed as ridiculous by certain portions of the right as well well, let's go to Jack uh, and Johnny. So one of one of the things that I hear a lot, and not just like when it comes to this discussion, but hey, I, Vermin, often good when to it see comes you. to this discussion, but like Republicans the conservatives are on the top. Don't care whether top right, what top they're left. Criticizing they're not really conservatives. They're libs, but like we we don't have like an epidemic of like transgender serial killers or transgender 
pedophiles, but they still run with that narrative, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, even the, the argument that, like, oh, they're they're gonna say trans people look silly if, like, we're talking about, like, cat genders or whatever, it, they're gonna do that anyway. Um, it's very bloody cyanogic. It got really bloody. Because gender is a social construct, and the way it's constructed is through self-identity. We can have an infinite number of genders. Sure, we can have a cat gender. If somebody's serious about having a cat gender, yeah, exactly, sure, they can Vermin. be cat gender. That's my point. I see no reason why they can't be that in, unless it's hurting somebody else. Um, and as far as like race being a social construct, it is, you know, like uh, 60 years ago, a lot of people viewed people from Iran as uh, white and they don't anymore. Um, and so we know that race race is a social construct that changes over time. Now we can have an interesting discussion about whether um, like it works the same way as gender. Uh, maybe it doesn't, but like it, it is at the end of the day, just kind of one of these ideas that is tangential. Not all social constructs are constructed the same, same way. Not every building is constructed the same. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, I just think that like, when it comes down to trans people, um, the argument really does have have to be that gender and sex aren't the same thing, especially being that, like, yeah, th there are societies all across the world that have had more than two genders at different points in time, and that's just an anthropological fact. Um, and so, like, we need to embrace that heritage of the human race. And we need to um, be able to accept that. Damn, you know, base. Sure, there are more than two genders, Riverboat and Jack. we have no idea how many there can be. And maybe there can be an infinite number of them. And you know what? That's okay. Hey, Vermin um, can stay so, here. Like, get off. Get out of your nuts. Point, yeah. You know what? If somebody's can sincere be here. about identifying as an attack helicopter, sure, I'll, I'll respect their pronouns. But the issue get is off that of a lot of back. people who make that quote unquote joke are being insincere about it. And that's kind of where it's like a problem like the, yeah. the same way like a lot of when people are being insincere right like i fucking yeah. hate this argument they're like oh well you just have to accept them because they say they are because you say that anybody who says they are whatever gender then they should like it's like, it's pretty fucking yeah. obvious when somebody's taking the piss and if there's any doubt then sure accept them right <gasps> if you're doubtful if you're like oh i don't know maybe they're taking them just accept them it doesn't matter right it doesn't hurt the movement at all jack it's just one of those things where like it it doesn't matter to me if I have to refer to someone as a stinger or whatever. Like, as long as they tell you and you respect what they want, and if they're being genuine about it, I don't see what the issue is. So, um, uh, we'll go to Johnny uh, in one moment. I just uh, something Jack uh, said, you know, reminded me of something. Like, um, uh, when uh, she said, um, uh, you know, as long as it's not hurting anyone, like, what does it matter? Um. This is like that. Um, that phrase is like from what I've seen from my experience is like the first step, like the very first step into like uh, gay acceptance and then trans acceptance, right? Like that people use, right? They, so, um, and it's what I what I use. That's where I started, right? So when I um like it, it's when I was young, it was less I was homophobic more that I just used those words like, oh, that's that's gay, you know, mm -hmm. right? Like in a negative sense, right? It was less that I actually hated p the gay people. I didn't put much thought into it. Um, but then when I was making that transition into like, I, like realizing, well, okay, what I'm saying is wrong. I'm hurting people, right? Um, the first thing that I said was like, well, as long as whatever they're doing, as long as, you know, they're they're happy and, and whatever they're doing isn't hurting anyone, then um, then that's okay. When I started uh, to accept uh, the, the idea of transgenderism, it's the same Yo, words I I'll use. I'll check that when out my afterwards. Friends Thank you. Uh, I'll check this out like afterwards, when I Silence. Thank you. Them. Uh, um, when my friends started uh, to accept it, the, the very first step is you start with that, you know? Um, I, I think it's just interesting to use use that phrase because um, I I feel like it's just like the easiest thing that we can do, like the the, the most basic thing before you be, you you get to an, um, an understanding, right? Like a deeper understanding of like, you know, like, you know, uh, the issues that are the other GPT um, uh, community has to face, right? It's just like, oh, okay, well, I guess they're not hurting me. They're not hurting my family. So like, what do I care, right? Um, I, and I just thought that was really interesting. I'm sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead, um, Jen. Okay. Um... I'm not going to touch transracial with a 10 foot pole. 
I'm, I'm a white person. I don't experience racism. I'm not going to touch that. I know that Rachel Dolezal hurt her community and what she did, but that's about it. That's all I know. Um, but when it comes to what I am, which is transgender, I often talk about the queer kids. I often talk about the queer little kids who need to be accepted and who need to be loved. And I was one of those kids who like had a weird experience of gender. And for a long time, I did think I was a cat, you know, me and my friends walked around with cat ears in school and it, it made us feel better about being in stuck in these weird little bodies that we have. And at the end of the day, I, and right now, by the way, I'm not speaking for trans people as a whole. I'm speaking for me, for me, yeah, it I is know, kind and pragmatic. Maybe to go to a 14 year old who insists on being called like a, a neo pronoun that's hard to pronounce or something that has to be like completely and totally new in order to perfectly describe who and what they are. I find it kind and pragmatic to say, I accept that you have these feelings and I accept that you are trying to express them in a way that is verbal, but you also have to understand that part of verbal communication is interacting with the world as a whole and the world as a whole needs a little bit of time. It needs they, them instead of Zezer for maybe, you know, 10 years or so. It needs that kind of thing. And I don't want those kids to be further ostracized just because they don't have queer adults. Like I didn't have queer adults. And so I walked around thinking I was a cat for like three years. And if I, if I was the queer adult for queer kids, as I hope to be someday when I'm a foster parent, like I I want to be able to say, hey, you know, change your name, do your pronoun thing, but also be cognizant of the fact that everybody is not going to accept you. And if you go with something easier, it might be a little bit easier on you as a person. And no, I'm not saying that that's a monolith for trans people. That's just me as a person. So do you know why, like, the majority of um, people detransition, right? because of, of how difficult it is for them to live as their preferred gender in society. I don't think that we should be like sitting here saying, you know, you shouldn't use neo pronouns or whatever, because it all makes shit, it all makes shit harder for you. I think everybody who uses neo pronouns is aware that it's less accepted than like they, them, but we should, uh, we should be doing the opposite. We should be pushing people to use them more so that it becomes more accepted. Because if it's something that people want to do, if it's something that helps them to actualize their gender and communicate their gender to other people or feel comfortable in their own bodies and their own skin, we shouldn't take away that method of expression mm -hmm. from them. Um, just like we shouldn't say you shouldn't transition because people won't accept you. Like it's one, it's a very deeply personal decision. Um, you know, coming out at all is a very deeply personal decision and depends on your own uh, personal sort of uh, uh, situation. Uh, so I'm not saying we should go, oh, well, you know, if your parents are going to kick you out of the house, you still absolutely have to transition. Like, but we absolutely shouldn't be like sitting here trying to discourage people from doing it either. Yeah. Okay. I, may I respond, please? Yeah, sure. Please. Okay. Okay. So again i'm not saying that the whole trans community has to act like me and try to be pragmatic i am saying that that is probably going to be my choice as a queer parent someday is to remind not force but to remind these little queer kids that i will help raise that we as a whole overall seven billion person society you, have to communicate Viv has clearly. Been too. and if we can't communicate as quick as clearly as we would like we have to be prepared i'm not saying that i'm going to like say no you can't use neo pronouns no don't do this don't do that in fact I, if a, if a kid came to me like that i would probably think it was great and i would encourage that kind of creativity however i would remind them i would advise them that it is going to be difficult and i know that there are a lot of people uh, we love who you, are Viv. older and they've Give accepted some that love, it's difficult chat. i'm talking about queer kids tell them tell them what you think who we as elders also, in the yeah. queer community need to advise and overall i think it's great that we're having conversations about this as a trans community because we can come to these understanding as understandings as who we are going to be as elders and how we are going to affect the next generation because probably we didn't my, have a generation my mvp us. since i can't vote for myself and so now we get to be that new class of people 
And I, I, I want right to be now, but... as helpful to those people as possible. And sometimes helping people means telling them that the world is cruel. I, oh, that's good. That's people good. fucking know that, though. I don't need to drill kids it don't know them. that. You're no, I'm talking about accepted. kids. They have, I'm talking about adults who have made a consensual decision. And I can't know that. By a neo pronoun. I'm talking about kids. Here's my so, concern kids. with this approach. So, if I, okay, if I go, and then after that, we'll go to red and red and check. Okay. 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 This is real. This is pretty quick. Uh, recently, uh, by a weird chance, I happened to watch a documentary about Dick Cheney. Well, uh, not a, not a documentary, a, a dramatization of Dick Cheney's life. And um, when Dick Cheney's daughter came out to uh, Dick Cheney as uh, as a lesbian, um, it has been said that Dick Cheney's wife um said, "Oh, honey." This is going to be so hard for you. That was what was attributed to her, to her lesbian daughter coming out. And this rhetoric sounds basically very close to me. And and I recognize where it comes from because there are pragmatic there there is some pragmatism to to that. The idea that it's going to be harmful, but that is also very very often used as, for the exact same reason as why I mean, I remember my own family when I came out as trans being like, oh, you're making this so hard for yourself and for us. Why would you choose this path? Why would you do this? Yeah, mine did and, too. Mine did too. Right, but right. The, just but, because my granny told me that this is going to be hard doesn't mean she doesn't love me and support me. It was helpful to be reminded of that when I was 17. I, I think that there is a – it's a thin line, and it should be – we should be careful around that type of rhetoric is what I'm saying. I don't think you're entirely okay. in the wrong here. I don't think that you're equivalent, but I do think – I. I think there's a reason why a lot of people uh, with conservative views will use that sort of sort of general societal concern. Yeah, society is horrible, but we also have to recognize that like our society will not get better if we don't acknowledge that like uh, suppressing parts of your identity and your self expression is really fucking hard for us to do. It's it's psychologically torturous for a lot of people. And while I don't think that every teenager is gonna get it right on the first try, I mean fuck, I didn't I didn't even I mean I'm still developing my understanding of my own gender. I think we all are here. I think most people are to some degree. People don't figure that out forever. But that doesn't mean that um, you know, our uh you know, our default approach you know, and I and I don't think you're saying this, but I don't think our default approach should necessarily be that like, oh, society isn't going to accept you because society won't accept a lot of things. Society doesn't really accept me. Society doesn't really accept most of us on this panel right now as it stands. Um, and I, but nonetheless, we fight forward even though it is hard. Uh, I think we have to be careful with that type of rhetoric so that we don't end up unintentionally uh, choke, like actually suppressing people being able to express themselves. That's all. Let's go with uh, Red and then Jack, please. Yeah, so there's like a middle ground here that can be like met, um, like, or like come to. Uh, I think that if it's a ch like a young child, obviously a child can't know that the hey, world bon is Winter. harsh Good to see you. until they've experienced the harsh world, and they should probably be warned beforehand. But the first response to someone coming out of something should never be the warning first. It should always be the affirmation first, because like, all you're doing uh, is like introducing negative stimuli uh to them coming out to you and to coming out in general right if their first interaction with you as a i'm not hating you don't worry is i was just being spicy when they say you were oh, spicy I'm, so i was spicy back you don't know worry. uh i'm non-binary i like the um pronouns fey right or whatever and the first thing you say is oh people are gonna not like that all right this is like not probably mentally healthy for the kid uh but also like you can later be like like the people who like let their kid like the uh, boys go to school like in dresses okay. but they also go just so you know right you will probably get bullied a little bit it doesn't make what you're doing wrong but just so you know be prepared for that right thank you bon winter These things appreciate don't have that to exist, tier one sub like, thank you mutually exclusively uh i don't know hmm. interesting uh, uh jack i mean a lot of this just comes down to like First off, I I don't think any of us on this panel would just be like, if somebody was like, well, my pronouns are Zezer, we'd just be like, no, fuck off. I'm just going to call you she. Uh, like, I, I don't think any of us would, would do that. And Not I think even that, I would do that. Yeah. And I, and I think that, like, li literally, it's just if somebody introduces new pronouns that they want to be called Vivian's that right never here. heard before, it's just kind of common decency to call them those things, right? Like, I don't think it's really as difficult as we're making it out to be. 
and I think that maybe there is a time and place to talk about how, you know, being queer might make things harder for you, but like there there is like something that's kind of that bothers me and it's the way a lot of conversations about trans issues revolve around like whether cisgender people are going to be accepting of us if if we're too weird and i think that that's a weird framing to have or a strange framing to have rather like what why why do we care <laughs> like let, let's just add let's because they're the majority to... and they control right. whether it... or not we can have something on our driver's license that reflects who yeah. we actually are and i would but accept that doesn't an ex. i would that accept doesn't, so many that things. doesn't mean we're valid or not whether or not we can have a driver's license that reflects our gender identity does not in any way make us less valid except in the eyes of like wider society and like I mean, well that is super important funny. that's also not what we're talking about right here on this panel right like I mean, I mean, we're talking about issues in general, but I would say that what we are, what are we fighting for as trans people? We're fighting for medical care right now, right now. So should now, we be making ourselves as palatable as possible okay, to hold cisgender on, hold people? On. Right now, we are fighting for legal things. We are fighting for medical things. We're fighting for tangible things. Yeah. And so when I, that's why I focused so hard on the term transgender earlier and making sure that we're all talking about ourselves and not other people is because we know what we need, okay? I don't know what other people need in their groups, in their marginalized groups. I know what I need, and I need medical care and the ability to change my name. Happy and if I'm not you, provided that, it's, it's cozy, gonna be fucking it? miserable being called my debt name for the rest of my life. Yeah, so, and I'm, it, but, like, but like, why I, are we I acting like all of these positions are counter to each other? Like, all, all I'm saying is not, that like, there's, I don't think we need to sell Zzer people we out to achieve that. We are saying support everyone. We are saying support everyone, but also be clear in your message as to what we want as our group. Because yes, we can't so help I other people who don't you. know what they need. I agree with you, that, but the, there, are, there are priorities, right? There are priority things, priority battles that we want to win at the moment. Um, things like medical care right things like um you know the transport thing probably right to help trans kids be more accepted in schools and so on hey law boy um, good to see you there's there's a bunch of, uh you know overturning the trans military ban getting trans uh, uh getting gender identity included in the list of protected classes for discrimination for jobs housing all that sort of shit these are really really important battles and yes those are the things that we should absolutely focus on so basically sitting around going, actually, you know what, the Republicans are right, and all these fey gender people, oh, like, it's not gonna fucking get us there. Like, we can focus on those fights and just go, and when somebody talks about fucking cloud gender or whatever, just go, who cares, dude? So, I, so, I, I, I want healthcare. <laughs> like, so I, I'm gonna, I wanna go back to Red for a second, then I'll go to Samantha. Um, I want, I want to say quickly though, like this, this fight, like it reminds me of, of this, of what you were talking about. Um, I guess uh, uh, Jack and Johnny, right? Um, of the fight that happens within the black community, like about like respectability, like um, being concerned about like what the dominant white uh, society like. Um, thinks about us, right? Like you have to dress in a certain way. You're embarrassing the group, right? Um, it's something that I've always, uh, well, I'm not, excuse me, I shouldn't say always, but uh, it's something that I at least currently re re reject. Um, but I can see, but I, I see why people fall into that. Um, and I'm not trying. I'm not, I'm not trying to like pick a side here between either of what your arguments. I'm just stating something. Um, but I, I just understand uh, why why people fall into that. It's because it's like. This is a uh, a distraction to like the the larger goals, right, of the Af of African American community. Like what we want to, like um, like we're trying to like get into these spaces, these spaces of power, right? And to do that, to like ease the friction, right? Like, well, then, hey, put on a suit, right? Like, take off your fucking hoodie, right? Um, and uh, um, don't talk back to the cops, right? Like, um, like don't challenge that power so that we can get into those powerful spaces in the hopes that um, we can, uh, once we have that access, that we can change things. I think it never actually works like that, though, and that we end up just dividing our community. But that's, yes. but I, I'm not speaking on trans issues. I'm just 
kind yeah, of no, it's, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's something it's I want to know and it's assimilationism whether it's in the trans community or it's in the black community like the, it is very much tangentially related essentially what one side of the argue, uh, one side of the argument is that you know we should make ourselves palatable to the uh, to the powers that be in order that we can uh, you know we can more reasonably argue for our positions from a place where they respect us um, and assimilationism <coughs> assimilationism just doesn't work because it just ends up destroying who you are you can't fight for the Thank right you. you can't fight f for the rights of the people that you are by ch changing who you fucking are right let's right. go I, to uh, uh red and then Samantha, <clears throat> then demon mom okay yeah so this whole like um our image as a group will like affect advocacy i think well sure it does because we exist in a social space uh you know perception and optics blah 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 blah. but like it's it's not gonna work uh like trans people black people marginalized people they know like when they're in their daily life right you can just be yourself everyone knows like oh if i'm gonna go talk to a congressman i'm not gonna go fucking wear like these glasses and my fucking lolita dresses and like uh you know have like wild makeup on uh, like everyone knows like when you're in like advocacy professional groups you're going to act different you're going to talk different you're going to say different things right you're going to focus on different things thank you so much thank that you so much cis people uh uh you thank know you cis very, very society much. are actually going to like care about right um and like trans everyone already knows this like th people know how to act in different situations there's no need to like change who you are in your daily life and your identity and your expression to like gain rights because again like vivian said it's sort of like against the whole point uh like you're supposed to be fighting to be your true self and if you're fighting to be your true self by not being your true self then you're not actually fighting for what you want um uh, uh sam will be back soon um let's go to uh Demian, please yeah uh i was gonna actually say something very similar to what viv said and i i think i'd like to sort of take that idea um and and run with it as well uh like there is something that's given up in in the idea of of pursuing assimilationist uh, policies, and and I mean we've seen this in multiple cases. I also think that some of the uh, and and I recognize that there is room for people to who are more comfortable, um, like quote unquote assimilating, doing that and being appropriate or whatever, and pushing the envelope in that way. I don't think there's I think there's some efficacy there to some degree. Um, but I also think that there is a, uh, a misconception and people accept the, this idea that, oh, well, you know, this su such and such small step is, su is actually a small step when actually it's just as big of a step as saying, actually, maybe we should rethink gender. Like we're by, by saying, well, we can add they and them, but no more is like, well, actually getting them to cross that step might just might actually be j almost as hard as accept as getting people to accept neo pronouns so we have to be careful and and do an analysis as to whether it's actually any harder i think sometimes it is sometimes it's functionally harder but other times i don't think it is i think that like in a lot of cases there is a a, a genuine desire and need in in the the in the people in all people to express themselves this is a u universal human experience and i think that we can actually appeal to that without having to necessarily sell ourselves short as assimilationists we can appeal to the the fact that everybody understands what's it what's it's like to want to express yourself and we can make those types of arguments instead of having to respond to um largely reactionary forces setting a narrative for us which is Oh, whoa, 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 that's way too fast. Why don't we just, uh, why don't you, why don't you push for the they, thems for a couple years and then, and then we'll see, but they never intend to see and you'll never get the they, thems either. Um, yeah, we I, were told this for fucking decades. Right. Like we've been trans people, trans people throwing bricks at Stonewall wanted their fucking rights. Yeah. And uh, there was this dude, um, this black activist, uh, um, uh, I, I saw a video from Pride, right? Um. I think it may have been one of the Black Hammer dudes, actually, and they are kind of cringe. But like, what he said up on stage made a lot of fucking sense, right? He got up on stage at Pride, and he and he was pissed. He was angry. He was like, "You're ain't fucking supporting us, right? You won your fight for gay rights, and now Tom and Becky get to walk up the aisle, and I still can't fucking walk to the liquor store without being stopped by the Pope, right?" And 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 that's 
ultimately what happens is the people who are assimilationist enough they'll push they'll, they might be able to push forward and get some of what they want um and in the meantime they're just saying no don't let the other ones anywhere near us because they're going to ruin the advances that we've made it doesn't work you can't you can't do it like that yeah. and, you can't and bring everybody along with you to, to get out in front of some people who might draw comparisons to say like uh, accelerationism um, I don't think it's the, quite the same thing. Um, we're talking about social understanding, which is significantly, in my opinion, more malleable um, than something like a the literal like physical machinery of of uh, of an economy or anything along those lines. As I, I, I I've had this conversation a lot, but I, I think on social issues we can afford to be a little bit more bold. That we can be we can shoot higher because people actually can digest and understand these things it might take a long time for the entire of the entirety of society to accept something um but people can learn remarkably fast i mean societies change socially massively all the time i mean uh, uh to take a look at just just to go look at the turn of the century how quickly we went from an agrarian world an agrarian society to a industrialized society you know what i mean like these 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 social changes happen all the time and that one even included economic changes um i think that people are more malleable to new ideas um than we think and we should you know, be able to address them and teach them and and challenge these sort of regressive assumptions. Uh, go ahead, uh, Johnny. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, excuse me, Samantha. Um, you just came back. Samantha, then Johnny. All right, so two things. Real quick, making progress, being a parent, uh, talking my son into bed. He said, I love you. And then he goes, I can't wait to get my vaccine. So cool, he's not crazy. Um, second thing is like, uh, I'm going to say... Um, I'm sorry I've been quiet for so long. I know that's not normal for me. Um, but part of like um, – I, di I didn't want this to be a debate so much as a, a, as a discussion, and here's where this is going to come into play. I sat there quiet listening to a lot of this, and I will say that my mind has changed. I came at this from a point of anger with certain things that people have used to try to delegitimize the trans um, rights and movements and stuff like that. So, I'll, yeah, I'm going to be pissed off. That people make jokes and and we turn into jokes, right? Um, however, I can understand that like it, that they should be included. We we shouldn't focus on excluding um, neo pronoun people or, or I think somebody called it xeno genders, rather than include that in our discussions with right wing people for acceptance, because um, it could be hurtful. But I'm gonna say, hey, I was wrong on some things. Sat back and listened. I shut the fuck up. I, I heard you guys' pog. words. The pog has um, returned. And thank you for the tolerating my already. fucking crazy ranting bullshit. We love you, dude. Samantha, you you're the best. I, I really I really like this. Agreed. Yeah. Um, go um, ahead, uh, Johnny. I pog just, returned. I understand the idealism. I understand that equity, equality, and the ability to be fully realized as a person and then to be uh, further accepted as that realization in society is, is the ultimate goal. I accept that. However, in Louisiana, it is currently illegal to prescribe a person testosterone hormone therapy. And so as long as the basic, and I do mean tangible, basic rights of trans people are left out of the conversation in lieu of whether or not we are accepting of people who don't even consider themselves in any cases transgender they consider themselves something else like it, it's never going to change in louisiana it's never going to be a law that i am technically able to fully realize my transition like, yeah, I can change my name all day and I'm still going to sound like a little kid who never hit puberty. It is it is hard to sit here and and I, I love every single person here and I love every single trans brethren that we have, but I'm sitting here knowing that there is a chance that in my lifetime I will never be able to fully transition and it it is hard to have like conversations about it, it's hard to have conversations about labels when the actual tangible aspects of my life are literally illegal 
and I should say on in response to that, I wholeheartedly agree with the 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 horror of that situation. I mean, there's 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 it's fucking terrible. This is why we fight against these sorts of things. And and the one thing that I will say is that uh perhaps we need to rethink the way that we look at how rights are even given at all in our in our society because the the fact that we have to have a different struggle for every single different person who's not cis straight white you know and a dude that we've had to have so many battles for each person even though the core concept they are a human who deserves basic rights we have to keep having this battle over and over and over again and to me that indicates that we have a society that doesn't fundamentally recognize the humanity of people who are different than them and i think we should challenge that underlying philosophy so that we don't have to keep having this battle so that we can actually and and it is possible you're right it is po and i won't lie i think it is very possible that um your state may never um you know make that legal and i would hope that somehow you would be able to find a way around that um and, uh, you know, if there's any way that I can put you into contact with somebody who might be able to help you, that'd be great. But I don't know that I can. I don't know that anybody can. Like, sometimes there are forces that are big. I mean, fuck, the UK is pretty fucked on trans stuff. It's really rough. There are areas of the US that are just totally fucked that I don't know that there's going to be any change. Um, and, and that's horrible. I agree with you. Uh, but, you know, I don't think that that is in conflict with the idea that we have a society of stepping back and looking and going, oh God, we have a society that denies the rights um, of black people because they look different, that denies the rights of gay people because they love different, that denies the rights of trans people because they express different, that we have this weird phobia and fear and disgust towards people who are different in any way and n n kicking the can down the road doesn't actually fix the problem you know if we if we let one person in well that's great for those people who got let in but what about all the people still dying on the outside and i would like if we could i i feel like there are ways to address all of these at once if we can start to change minds on the stuff that matters as opposed to playing a game of sort of uh being pulled along and i do realize that there's nothing there's nothing that i would argue against between um you know pushing for pragmatic change pushing for pragmatic change is awesome and it should be fought for but i don't think that that's in conflict with acknowledging that the uh the battlefield can we can affect where the battlefield is and we don't necessarily have okay. to um you know push others or ignore others or whatever i'm gonna reframe this really quick i'm gonna say and, and I hate saying this out loud. Um, I, I do plan someday to try and run for political office on a, on a small local scale. I think that at the very least, having the ability to change Louisiana or a small part of Louisiana is probably in my future someday. And to reframe this, I am going to be the person, if and when that happens, who is actively going into political lawmaking spaces and trying to make changes that will affect us. And so I need to know what is going to be not only accepted rhetoric, not only who we consider to be part of the transgender community, but also what we want. And if I go to every good old boy Republican who I will be sitting with in the Louisiana Congress, and I say that you have to make it legal for, you know, X, Y, and Z to happen. I need to have like reasons for that. And, Let me explain. and all I'm saying, can I try I'm to not... pitch something? Because I, yeah, because you know I think there's something that I could show that I could sh use to illustrate my point, which is if you walk up to a good old boy Republican and you say, hey, uh, what do you feel? Do you think, uh, do you think transgender people should be able to get the hormones they want? They're going to go, fuck no. But if you walk up and you go, hey, do you believe that everyone should have the right to, um, get the a medical treatment that they need from a doctor, regardless of who they are? They're probably going to go, yes. And that is the difference of what I'm talking about. I'm talking about changing it from this, from our perspective in general, from a singular non, you know, 
let's take one identity let's try to win with this one let's not no let's build an actual solidarity let's say wait a second nobody gets fucking left behind we work together we push for things that are good for everyone now i recognize there are probably some situations where you have to make a specific law that only is going to target one person uh discrimination protections are one of those where getting trans people added into certain types of discrimination protection can be good but that's not all cases and if we adopt an approach that actually does um include not just trans people that exist now but trans people who might have slightly different issues in the future we'll have we'll be future proofing ourselves and we make the message in a way that is beneficial to people who ha who may not be able to understand trans people but they might be able to understand hey you know a guy and a, a woman and a man should both be able to go to the doctor and get personalized treatment and this and nobody should be able to tell them that they can't that's okay. that's i the think difference. i understand i think i understand what you're saying i think to reword it in a very brief way not to play what people call whack-a-mole with the law which is to litigate very uh specifically Yes. And to make laws that are specifically targeted at, at uh, for instance, the binary version of trans people or specifically targeted at only what we would at the table consider transgender people and not X, Y, Z gender people. I, I accept that. And so I, I need to actively figure out a way that we can be legislatively open and free and also not scare the shit out of the republicans well, they're already because scared I, but, I, because yeah. I, they're already fucking scared yeah but like those are the people at the end of the day like in the places where we need it most in the places where people are suffering the most because of the lack of health care and the lack of every other thing that we need we are contending against the very people that we are actively demonizing on this panel mm. Um, yeah, I mean, oh god, I'm I'm just curious uh, about that, Johnny. Right, um, the, the, that last point, like mm -hmm. not actively demonizing a pup. Now, I, you know, I'm I'm more than willing to be combative, <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, like I, I, again, I I can't speak to you know the struggles of of the trans community, um, but uh, I I'm thinking of those southern states where African Americans like. Uh, have so much trouble being uh, accepted getting those equal rights right is it that like um they need to make republicans less scared of them um yeah. or is it that like you need simply is that you need to maybe uh change minds like change um uh uh minds about like the F um first of all white supremacy in general right <laughs> like the, the larger struggle white supremacy in general right um but fight against things um like uh, uh uh, restricting voting rights, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, fighting against like all the individual issues, right? And changing minds specifically there, unless getting like the Republican Party to be a different beast than it is. It like is not so much that they are scared. It is that at the end of the day, Republicans are extremely money minded, whether they're religious or not, and they don't want to pay, quote unquote, for people to have the kind of definitive helpful health care that we in the trans community need we do not have the ability to fund hormones for people who are on uh, medicare and medicaid we do not have the ability to and at uh, fun fact actually as of this past november we don't even in louisiana have the ability to put state funds to abortions we're actively moving backwards in every possible progressive way and nobody's talking about it because everybody else considers us that 50th state that just sort of leches at the middle bottom of the bay and and fucking languishes like i accept that we're languishing but at least have a little bit of goddamn respect for us and help us figure out what the fuck we're gonna do in a tangible way that's gonna keep people from killing themselves yeah i think I um like mississippi i think like uh the last i think like a week ago um uh, march 13th yeah like uh almost a week ago they literally denied like federal medicaid money um it was like six hundreds of millions of dollars from the federal government to fund their like you're good samantha you know Don't worry about it. um these things get spicy their, their health care they were just like I don't hold a grudge. Yeah, but it's coming from Joe Biden. I don't want it. And <laughs> now you have all these people in fucking uh, Mississippi who, who don't have health care. I, I guess it's a question of strategy is all I'm uh, uh, asking um, uh, Johnny, right? Like, um, it's like, um, do we put our efforts into changing the Republican Party from being all the terribleness that it is, right? Or like transforming the Democratic Party 
um, which you know we have a foothold in, right? Um, and then winning on on those on that platform, right? So like putting in like a for Louisiana, putting in a Democratic governor, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like and and that's what I meant by like changing minds. I guess like uh, uh, moving voters from one party uh, to other, like being attractive within the context of Louisiana, right? Okay. With, uh, being attractive there to be able to mm -hmm. get the things that you're talking about. Um, rather than like, because because when I hear scare like scare Republicans, it's like, well, compromise, compromise, compromise until like maybe possibly one day in the future they give us this one thing. That's what I'm what I'm thinking. When well, I hear that. and, and to, to okay. bounce off, um, here. really quick, can I respond to that? And then, um, and then we'll go to you. Okay, because yeah, sure. it's gonna be really quick. I mm -hmm. can't speak for how other people would work. If I mm -hmm. had, but I can tell you that if I had the funds and the ability to run for a public office tomorrow. What I would do is I would run as the green gay Republican. That's what I would do. That I, because I am fiscally conservative, I believe in the tradition of uh, gun culture in the United States, and I want to preserve that. But I am also green and gay, and there's plenty of green Republicans already, and there's plenty of gay Republicans already. Why not just put them under the same umbrella? That's that would be my personal strategy because I know plenty of Republicans here, and I know that they would work with me. However that may be different state to state. It may not be feasible for somebody to integrate themselves into a state party. That's part of the problem when we talk about United States politics is that we're so disjointed across the continent that we are not able to have a really, when it comes to political things at the very least and trans people running for office and shit like that, we're not able to really truly have uh, an overall national strategy because we're all living in so completely different spaces. Do you see what I'm saying? But that would be my personal strategy is to like have the friends that I know who are fiscal Republicans, who is surprisingly a lot of people in South Louisiana, and to be able to say, hello, I share things with you and I, I want to help you, but I also need you to understand that you're fundamentally cutting off some of the things that I need to be able to realize who I am as a person. It, I would pay for the goddamn testosterone. They just need to make it fucking legal. Uh, go ahead, Demon Mama. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think there are a lot of risks with that approach, but I do wish you the best of luck. And uh, I tend to have a um, different view of a lot of American politics. I don't really see an easy future in which um, there is consensus on social issues across America in, in any way like we once um, saw. I don't think we're going to see another big civil rights victory like um, gay marriage anytime in the near future. Um, I think that the system as we know it has been so smashed up and so um, totally fucked that there's like almost in most places it just it isn't functioning anymore um and part of the reason why i predict that like a lot of particularly coastal states are going to become functional sanctuary states for a lot of queer people all across the united states is because i think that a lot of these places are totally jammed and and they've been jammed because the republican party has the advantage of fighting for the status quo. If they break the machinery for, of change that democracy is supposed to have, which they have via things like um, the Electoral College or uh, voter suppression or gerrymandering or loading the courts with Republicans, if they break those systems of change that we're supposed to be able to have to make us an adaptive society, which they have done, we can't adapt, which I, I do realize that there is um, certain areas that are totally changing and adapting places that haven't been affected to the same degree by this Republican policymaking. Um, in fact, you can look at, um, even the West coast, which is no, by no means perfect and is still a neoliberal hellhole in a lot of ways, but is swinging left. I mean, here in Washington, we just had a Supreme court case that broke all of the drug possession laws and it, looks like they're not going to have a replacement or they're not going to have the political will to break one, which means that possession, drug possession is no longer a crime uh, of uh, like minor drug possession is no longer a crime at all in Washington. And that's like, what the fuck? Like that is un inconceivable in most places of the United States. So 
we have this weird effect where culturally the United States is like pulling away from one another. And I do find that concerning, but I worry that, um, with the with the with the Republican Party's official platform being things like anti-gay marriage, that even depending on your place, there might be victor, a path to victory by you know sneaking into the Republican Party or whatever. Um, but I really worry that the machinery of those parties are designed to squash out people like you and make it so that you cannot be effective within that machinery. And if that's the case, and I don't want to be, I'm not. I'm not a doomer, just so you know. Like, I believe very much that there is a path to make the world a better place. I just don't know that it's going to be any of the solutions that we thought might work in the past. And right now, uh, we have a very strange place. We have had, in the last three months of our lives, we've witnessed an insurrection on the Capitol. We've witnessed multiple hate-based hate, hate -based shootings. Like, this is... America's losing its fucking mind. And... Uh, yeah, I don't, I worry that like, that, that trying to change the Republican party is going to be a fruitless endeavor. This is my so, worry. Uh, we'll go to red, we'll go to red Charlotte in the chat. I just have one quick, quick pushback and slash question for Demon Mama. Then I'm going to go to red Charlotte. No, nah, Jack. Um, um, Demon Mama, have we ever actually had social consensus in this country for anything? Right. Um, we never had social consensus with, uh, um, with the gay marriage, right? Like the Supreme Court simply deemed it is, then it is, right? Um, we didn't actually finish the fight across the country. Uh, for interracial marriage, that's not a subtle question. A lot of people who don't accept that, right? Um, just like uh, there's a whole series of like uh, these fights where like, we well, yeah, were settled, but like for, especially people, people on the East Coast, the East, on the coast, right? Like, yeah, it's settled for us. Well, not so for so many other people. They, they still disagree with us. On oh, yeah. I don't think there's That's ever been like, anymore. yeah, I don't think there's ever been a time where we've had like social consensus, but I believe there was a, I, I do believe there's been times in American history where um, the federal government was functioning in such a way that we could feasibly have nationwide like social change, for example, civil rights changes, um, you know, during the 60s, which uh, was the result of a uh, sort of a declaration from the federal level of this is going to be consistent. You can't discriminate in this way. You can't segregate in this way anymore. Or with gay marriage, where it's like, yeah, you might be able to play around in your in your state and try to make it illegal, but no, we're actually making that like unconstitutional. Those are imperfect, but I do believe that that is a um, a mechanic that is quickly disappearing. Yeah. So let's go to uh, Red, uh, Jack, then Vivian. Yeah. And, and please be quick because we're actually running out of time. But uh -huh. please. So like um in my head, I think the Republican Party is I've already like given the Republican Party a death sentence in my head. I think like the only goal currently should be to destroy them and to abolish them. They they are like a cancer, uh like currently. Damn. Um well they always have been, but like mostly now. Um and like to say to what uh Demon Mom was saying, I don't I don't think that's true because like even under just with executive order uh biden's like lgbt protections have these are federal these are widely applying to like everyone in the country and the equality act is all but inevitable the equality act in terms of like how 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 much it will improve people's lives is like on the level of the civil rights act for lgbt people like this is like a massive fucking like uh deal um for like civil rights so i think that like there are going to be like things that like victories that are at that level um and m mostly like the opposition to the equality act uh is like prime time fox news junk even most fucking republicans are fine with it the only thing they have a problem with is they think that like it's going to destroy fucking women's sports or whatever right like My but everything else in it they agree with yeah, my one concern on that, I don't want to, to like go on long about this or anything, is just that um I know, I know I'm notorious for that, but <laughs> but it, the, the we had executive orders that were great for trans people under Obama and Trump undid them. And I don't trust executive orders as a me as a means of lasting power. It might make it better for four years, but if they get Trump again, it's all gone. We and we don't have a way to get things from, through the Supreme Court that can be truly difficult to un, un unwield. We've we've gotten the ability to uh, have four year periods of slightly easier life, but I'm very worried that we're not going to ever be able to actually like make solid wins. That's my concern. Well, that's why I said the Equality Act, uh, like the bill. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I, I haven't checked in on that as to its likelihood of passing, but I hope it does. Yeah. Let's, so, let's go to Jack and then Vivian. Yeah. 
the the Equality Act, I I hope it passes. I really, really do. Um, I don't think that they're going to be using true egg, um, egg. like their Hi, ability opioid to crisis. pass through reconciliation on the Equality Act, though, which means that we have to get like ten Republican senators to vote on it to get it to pass the Senate, and that probably isn't going to happen. But it might happen in the near future. Who knows after midterms or whatever. Um, and we're going to get cranked I, in the midterms. I, I just want to throw this out there and like, it won't, Johnny, I wish I you all happen. the best, but kind of like circling back around, I like, I don't think a lot of Republicans in this country are down to like support trans people. Um, like, and we saw this with the Blair white debate, like, a lot of Republicans and a lot of the mainstream Republicans these days are like tell trans people to their face, you know, grow out your mustache, you know, and stop, stop being openly trans. That's the best thing you can do for uh, us. I think so. Like, hold, we'll see, like, it, we'll see. it's Pantano. incredible we'll see. how deep this goes. And I, there, there is a part of it that is really, really scary to me. Um, seeing just open fascism taking hold in a major political party and my hope and, and you know that I, I agree with charlotte on this i i think the republican party is largely dooming itself but my hope is that by embracing fascism they drive away more people who like yourself might like run as like moderate republicans or green gay republicans and drive us away into a large democratic coalition to make sure that they can never have any kind of meaningful power in this country ever again. And then we can do all of our political debates and all of our uh, political maneuvering within the Democratic Party to try and uh, mm, I make don't know. that we'll see, Nibiru. I, I think I think we'll that see. offers a more coherent path. They to don't victory, care about um, democracy. Overall, Remember that like in, in the overall hmm. battle in this country. Yeah. Um, and it, it's but it is definitely frightening what i'm seeing going down in the republican party so hey if you can if you can make that a little bit less scary i'm all for you okay hey John, yeah very and quickly I, rebuttal and then just you very very quickly and it's not even a rebuttal it's really just saying that I, it's really just repeating what i said before which is i know what the republican party is in louisiana by and large by and large it is moderates um, there are some people who are extremely religious, but honestly, that's not that common in Louisiana, mm. at least not among people who are very we'll talk politically about this after. active. Um, and so I, for me, I, I'm not speaking for the trans hegemony overall. I'm not speaking for an overall uh, trans like political thing. I'm speaking for me. If I was to have the ability to do that, I know that my values it when would I see be data. respected by at least part of the Louisiana Republican Party, and that is not true in every state. Um, okay, so let's go to Vivian. Um, but uh, trans hegemony sounds really awesome. Like that sounds oh, like a yeah. lot of fun. Let's make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, prime, prime. We would be benevolent rulers. Okay. <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> Vivian. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. I was trying to get in for a little while, but I was just I was thinking about what Demon Mama was saying earlier about like, uh, oh shit, changing the way that we think about things in terms of individual issues. And some, you know, you might be interested in a political theory called anarchism. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, mean, I talk about this shit a lot. I talk about the shared struggle and blah blah blah, right? And I, I don't want to bore people, but I do want to drill it into their fucking heads uh, that we are in, all engaged in a, in a type of shared struggle, um, and that means that we should be forming broad coalitions with other people who, you know, uh, suffer because, like you said, Demon Mama, because they are different, right? Uh, yep. Because they differ from what is the socially accepted norm or the default, as we were trying to define last night, Prime. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, no, not back there. Don't go back there. Um, <laughs> and, and but they all they all suffer because they differ from the from from that norm. And you know, we should be uplift. We should be using our collective power to uplift all those people, right? Um, and it doesn't matter if it's like, you know, black struggle, trans struggle, uh, Asian Americans who are going through the fucking ringer right now, right? Um, like, 
if we see somebody who is suffering in our society, we should, all of us who are of this mindset should be coming together and saying, hey, guys, you look like you're having a shit time. What can we do to support you? What can we do to aid you in the struggle? How can we spread awareness of the issues? How can we get, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do you want us on the fucking street with placards and what have you? Because ultimately, like, that... That I believe is what we what we need. You yep. know, in yep. the beginning of the BLM Based protests uh, last year, right? The the country was overwhelmingly in fucking favor. Okay, they were so in favor that when the Minneapolis precinct three burnt down, uh, the majority of Americans thought that it was justified. Right? That is a radical fucking action, burning down a police precinct, and to have the majority of Americans on side with the protesters who did that is fucking amazing. Okay, and so we need more broad. We need more broad protest movements. We need to be able to come together more uh, and, and support each other in our own individual struggles. That's what I would say. And I think that's how we actually get shit done is because there are actually uh, a lot more of us than there are bigoted, shitty that, fucking aristocrat. Republicans. Good way to... They're just very loud and oh. we're just very divided. It's going to be a wild year. We're going right? to talk about this. And if we're just pushing on one issue and everybody else is just like, well, you know, I'll wait, I'll push on my own individual issue, uh, then we're not going to get anything done. We have to come together uh, as a broad coalition yep. uh, to challenge the the, the sort of um, cishet, fucking able-bodied, neurotypical uh, male hegemony um otherwise yeah we're we're just fucked if we just fight among ourselves and shit on the other kids <laughs> sorry samantha <laughs> so um to my to my audience um uh stream is not ending stream is not ending likewise stream is not ending. However, oh, stream is over Fuck. however however we're actually not going to go to an open panel yet um i'd like to uh, continue this conversation that we had uh, with uh, alice and demon mama um if you guys two are up to it for it um, we're gonna uh, help Dima. You can fight, fight, uh, fight. We're fight. gonna have our uh, good friend Joe the Silly Serious come on with us, um, and have this discussion because I think it's gonna be super interesting. Uh, I'm really excited actually. Oh, uh, we're missing um, out on Joe, and Joe's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, um, uh, so uh, here, here's, what, here's what we do, um, because we want to, um, we want to give time uh, for this, but we want like a, a smaller panel. But like, uh, uh, if if you really want to be a part of this, then let me know. Um, uh, send me a DM. Let me know if you are willing to stick around for this. Um, but uh, uh, we aren't going to go it's immediately to the panel. This is going to in, in the private room and uh, and then move on from there. Um, but I definitely want to give people an out um, to, uh, to to move on to um, whatever else. I don't know. I, I guess you guys have lies outside of my panels. I, I don't really believe it, but you guys seem to walk away, and then sometimes you don't come back. I don't know. I hate it. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to give you an outro. You can say whatever you like. Um, um, you can uh, uh, let people know um, about you know uh, where to find you, and uh, say uh, maybe a final message on any of this. All right? So uh, we'll start with Alice. Alice, please. Sure. Um, uh, I stream on Twitch. Thanks for having me. Uh, go look at my Twitch panel. Their stream. Oh, yeah. Might be a little tired. Um, thanks uh, for having me three nights in a row. Um, I'll try not to be too spicy in the next thing. Um, and uh, I, I love Can't all of you guys. The same. If we ever disagree with each other. I, I love everybody here. I think everybody here is great. So thanks for uh, talking as well. Okay. Awesome. Do you, Mama? Yeah, uh, my name is Demon Mama. You can find me at demonmama.com. Um, all my links to all my social media is there, including my Discord, which is pog as hell. So um, uh, I guess we're going to be staying here for some more debate. And then afterwards, I always do Q&A, and I always do debate afterwards. So if you hated my takes or if you love my takes, come on afterwards and come pick a fight with me because I'll talk with you. We always do that after every panel. Um, but it's going to be after this debate, actually. So, yeah. But anyway, uh, come check out my stuff. And uh, Prime, of course, thank you for having me on. I'm just going to run and hit the bathroom before we uh, get started. Please, please. So. Sure. Uh, Johnny. Hello, friends. My name is Johnny. I go by Johnny Scarlet with two T's at the end here on Twitch. And I talk about a myriad of things. I talk about philosophy, art, math, science, but mostly politics. I, I especially love doing breakdowns of current events for you guys and having an international community at my channel. We have a lot of people who tune in and who give their own opinions on what is actually going on in their neck of the world, in their in group. And I always appreciate that. I appreciate everybody who sent such kind messages in the chat, y'all. Um, 
And I really hope that we can all be a force for change. And I agree with Alice that uh, this has been a contentious discussion, but it has been productive. And I'm so glad that Samantha invited us all here. Um, thank you, Samantha. Thank you, Prom. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Uh, let's go to Vivian. Hello, everybody. I am Mix Vivian Wolf, and you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Medium. I'm prolific but sporadic. Um, if you want to help me out and support me, you can follow me on Twitter. That would be really, really appreciated because I love being able to give, uh, uh, get people for interviews. Um, and the more followers I have on Twitter, the easier it is to reach out to people with large followings and, and get them there for interviews and stuff. Uh, usually on my channel, we talk about cults, extremism, um, you know, neo-Nazis, and then occasionally uh, trans issues and TERFs, which are very much in the in the extremist kind of <laughs> category. Uh, yeah, so stop on by um, my Twitch sometime and uh, and give me a follow on Twitter, please. I'd really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Sure, sure. Okay, um, let's move on to Red uh, Charlotte. Uh, yeah, so I don't really have any other social media because I'm banned on Twitter. Uh, so you can find me at twitch.tv slash redcharlotte. Uh, I just play video games and debate people about the war in Afghanistan and, you know, guns. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, but I do, uh, I want to right now make a formal declaration uh, and invite to Johnny uh, to debate me on why we should ban these, all right? You should debate me on my stream about gun control, and it, I th it would be really fun, all right? Under no pretext. Absolutely. I would love to do that, yeah. Uh, okay. Um... Uh, sorry, did you? Is it? Uh, sorry, did you, did you say you stream uh, Red Charlotte? I, I missed that part. Oh uh, yeah, at twitch.tv slash Red Charlotte. I'm actually streaming right now. So okay, uh, the links in chat. Links uh, for all everyone's in chat. Um, final. Uh, well, not finally, but uh, Johnny. Um, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Riverboat Jack, please. Um, yeah, you guys can all follow me as we uh, pull together the burgeoning uh, trans hegemony over oh, on thank you. Jack. We got more coming, a lot uh, more stuff. On Twitch and also a lot on more stuff coming. Twitter. Uh, We're a long do, stream today. Do give me a follow. Hit, hit that follow button. Give me your subs. Give Prime your subs. Give Samantha Banana your subs for helping put this all together, okay? Um, and uh, yeah, have, have a wonderful evening. Okay. All right. Um, and last but not least, uh, we have Smith Banana who put all this together, uh, who made this happen. Um, you know, um, some people have asked for this panel uh, before, but I'm like, oh, oh, okay, help me gather trans individuals to um, to to make this a reality, right? And then it just kind of like whatever people just kind of want to make suggestions. Hey, do this thing, right? But I'm not gonna actually help. Um, Samantha actually stepped up. She's like, I want to make this happen, and I'm like, oh, okay, all right. And Samantha just uh, took off and. Uh, just made this a reality. So I, I want to thank Samantha Banana again for being so kind as to uh, be, be so helpful to the channel in general, but to also to put this in particular uh, together. So uh, uh, Samantha, please. I mean, be, you, like you should know by now, Prime. I don't fuck around. Um, yeah, Prime, I, I brought up an idea. Prime said, literally just said, sure. Uh, within a half an hour, I had, a, I, I had sent invites out to uh first person i sent invites out were to uh demon mama and riverboat jack just so i could get some spice up in here um and then all of us i just filled in with the rest of the cool people um and uh red charlotte new here um referred to me by uh, our good friend doobie um exclamation point doobie in the chat if you want to check out a really cool politics server also uh exclamation point eris in the chat if you want to catch my favorite politics server um but yeah Thanks for letting me do this. Thanks for letting me put it on. Um, I, I'm really appreciative that like I had an idea and you were like, yeah, fucking run with it. Um, so that's awesome. I mean, you know, I think it's I didn't think this many people would want to uh, watch or participate linked. in an all trans channel. And I think a lot of people didn't realize how spicy an all trans channel, like, runs channel can Nazis fucking server. get. Um, boy, were they fucking wrong. Um, so yeah, um, you can follow me over at Samantha Banana 85. Don't give me your subs. I have no followers to even... I don't qualify. Um, so give them to Prime instead. Give them to Riverboat Jack. Uh, give them to Demon Mama, Aris Johnny Scarlet, I... Red Charlotte, Alice, I everybody blew else. Aris out uh, on another panel. I'm not that cool. Um, I mainly do uh, politics and Dungeons and Dragons. Um, that's my thing. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Samantha Banana 4, um, where I tend to yell at people on Twitter like everybody else. The links to everyone is in chat. And Samantha, are you? am I hearing this right? Are you not affiliate? Yeah. 
No, I'm I'm not an affiliate. But why, like, why not? You, we could be pushing your channel, get people over I, there. I'm not an affiliate. <laughs> uh, to, yeah, it's yeah, followers and stuff like that. Uh, okay, follows me, so I'm everyone, mean, I guess. everyone, fuck you. Go over there and, <laughs> and follow Samantha Banana. We can talk help about Help me that become after. an affiliate. Yeah, help her out. Again, oh, like, we've, we've done it before. We've like made people affiliate like live on air before. We've done that. Um, so go oh over my there. God. Give her a follow. <clears throat> um, are you live now? Um, no, I'm not. I'm not live now. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, the frog, give, yeah. Over there, give her a follow. It's the top, uh, uh, Samantha. Yeah, I um, wanted yeah. to dedicate all my attention to this, not my chat or whatever. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So, uh, uh, what's gonna happen is, um, I'm gonna move away from this. I'm gonna jump out of the room. Move away from this. Um, uh, so it looks like we're we'll have uh, Alice, um, uh, Demon Mama, um, uh, Jack, and uh, a Red Charlotte. Okay. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, everyone, thank you. You were talking about the turf thing, weren't you? Not the the turf thing. No, no, oh. not a, not quite the turf thing. It's um, a sex, a sex gender debate, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, sex gender. Okay, I'll I'll leave. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> uh, uh, we'll do that. So um, I'm going to talk to my audience. Uh, we'll be right back. So. Few minutes we'll be right back okay um but uh, uh thank you all for uh being here thank you for putting your time your energy your passion and your knowledge of my uh community i know they appreciate it just as much as i do thank you so much peace out cool. bye wait where's yeah. the fucking goodbye button there it is goodbye uh, am i supposed to move goodbye. or am i we were supposed oh, to goodness. wait here yeah, right I, thank you guys so much uh that was so fun yeah, yeah it was really good, good. um